Welcome back. Damn it. Welcome back to I did this instead of killing myself. I hope that audio isn't distorted. Does that sound good? Okay. A stand of comedy and lifestyle podcast based in Greenville, South Carolina. It is the week of May 16th, 2022. And thrilled to have another episode for you guys i'm recording this before uh the monday i'm actually out of town again for another bachelor party this week um it's the last of my friends to get married last of my close friends so uh so that's weird uh yeah i should probably be getting on that um no oh, i'm not gonna get on it who cares? No, but it'll be good hanging out with some college buddies in Michigan. But um, I'll be back uh, this coming Thursday night. But uh, there still will be um, a great week of uh, local open mic comedy here. So I'm excited. Excited, excited, excited. More excited about my guest today. Ben Jennings. Um, uh Ben was overdue on the podcast. Ben is a good friend of mine. Wasn't at first because uh, I just didn't really know him. I was going to say something else about his ex-girlfriend. That doesn't matter. Ancient history. Anyway, more recently, got a chance to hang out with Ben a lot more. And Ben's been uh, very active in the open mic uh, scene here in Greenville. Ben's awesome. You'll get to know him in this interview, but uh, I really like Ben because actually my first impression of Ben when I met him was like this kind of badass, hard to approach, cool guy. Um, he has this real polish when he's on stage and he's very well dressed. He's very like, I don't know, kind of intimidating almost. And then when you get to know him, you find out he's like a total dork and completely unassuming, completely likable, completely like almost like too humble, <laughs> if that's a thing, because um, he's a great dude. But anyway, uh, I I really like Ben on stage. He's amazing. Like I said, very polished. He kind of has a darker sense of humor, uh, Jezelnik style joke writing and things like that. But he also has this quirky, nerdy side. Um you know, into things like comic books and Caillou. It's a show on PBS that he like likes to come out to. Um, so yeah, really interesting person. Loves stand up and works really hard at it. So great person to know. Get to know him. Follow him. Uh, in this interview, I won't like tease it too much. We talked about uh, our cars, God, Lizard Brain, uh, and how much Ben hates dogs and kids. So. Oh, ladies, and he's single, and he's not gay, even though like he dresses so stylish. I call him Metro all the time. So, uh, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, Ben's awesome. Nothing but awesome things to say about Ben. Check him out. Before we get to the interview, though, here's what's going on this week in local comedy, the week of May 16th, 2022. We have the usual open mic starting tonight at uh, Coffee Underground. Um, that starts at seven o'clock. That's hosted by No Expectations Comedy, Craig Holcomb, Travis Thubbin. Show starts at seven. Get there at six fifteen, six o'clock to be safe to get on that list. Um, on Tuesday in Asheville, we have the Auditorium, hosted by James Harrod. <clears throat> that show starts at nine o'clock. Um, also on Tuesday in Columbia, we have the Art Bar. Um, that's hosted by Patrick Fowler. Um, that show starts at 8.30. DM Patrick to sign up. On Wednesday, we have the Radio Room. Um, this is going to be changing soon, but uh, there is a show at the Radio Room at the Open Mic. More details to come from Adam Schulte. Um, DM Adam to sign up and get on the list. That show starts at 8 o'clock. Um, also on Wednesday in Asheville, there is the Disclaimer Open Mic hosted. Um, well, there's different hosts, but it's at the... Uh, Asheville Music Hall downtown. That show starts at 8 o'clock as well. Um, DM Carrie Goff uh, if you want a point of contact for details, but you can also just sign up in person. On Thursday, we have the Jokes Out Loud Comedy Show at the Comedy Zone, hosted by Brandon Rainwater. That show uh, starts at 8 o'clock, $10 cover for audience members. Uh, list for that goes up every Sunday night at 5 o'clock on the Jokes Out Loud Facebook page. 
Um, and then I also I always forget to name this mic, but Dante Anderson hosts this Habibas um, mic on Friday nights at nine o'clock. Habibas, so you can catch one more mic in the weekend. That's five mics if you want to hit it. DM Dante Anderson to sign up um, and get some time in. Right now we don't have full list on that one, so comics can do ten uh, ten minutes right now, uh, or maybe even a little more if you want to screw around. Uh, all right, uh, this weekend we have a celebrity comic at the Comedy Zone, Capone from New York. I don't know this guy, but he just goes by one name, so he must, like share. So he must be a big deal. Um, there's, uh, ooh, you know what? He's got a show on Thursday at eight o'clock. I may have flubbed this. He's got. A, it says he has a show on Thursday, May nineteenth. Two shows on Friday. Um at seven and nine and two shows on Saturday at six and nine. So jokes, <laughs> if this is true, jokes out loud is not happening this week because that would be a conflict. Double check what I'm saying right now. Double check the jokes out loud because jokes out loud might not be happening this week. So if it's not, then then go see Capone instead, I guess. All right. Sorry for that confusion, but it is what it is. I'm recording this a week ahead of time. Hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I hope you enjoy my interview with Ben Jennings. Here it is. What's up? <laughs> What's up, Ben Jennings? Hello, I'm Ben Jennings. This is uh, Ben Jennings, dude. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. This is kind of, uh, yeah, overdue. It is. You I think me. I asked you. Yeah, what did I ask you? To Last do? year. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. And do you like hold the... You, the show like in high regards you're like i don't know <laughs> i didn't Go think i was me. good enough for it oh please <laughs> that's so dumb well, yeah I, I was on a break too and i wanted to get back into it before i was like yeah let's do the show yeah you know? but yeah you asked me a while ago well so no i'm honored I, like and like you actually watch the show and stuff because mm -hmm. you still listen listen you learn, listen yeah i don't like yeah. looking at you yeah <laughs> good call <laughs> And you but also listen like, on YouTube, clearly yeah. had a lot of free time on your hands for sure. <laughs> yeah. No offense to anybody who listens. I love it. But <laughs> yeah. Um, that's awesome, man. Yeah, man. I like it. I listen to just about every episode. Yeah. It's cool to hear from local comics. Yeah. Saturday morning, we're here. Ben brought coffee. I methodical. just rolled out of bed. Where's this where's this from, dude? Methodical. This is like, I think they're local. Support local co coffee. I don't know. Yeah, you know, we don't have any advertisers yet. <laughs> Brought to you by two Dude, cups. I don't think any advertiser would ever sign on to this show. I would if I was selling Do something. They, well, when they found the name of it, they'd be like, uh, Oh, I did, yeah. I drank methodical coffee instead of killing myself. Yeah. It's anti-suicide. I just mentioned it. <laughs> it is a drug. Caffeine is a drug. Mm -hmm. Nothing mm -hmm. helps prevent suicide like drugs. That's right. That's right. I'm a. Are you a big coffee guy? Do you have it like every day? Um, I do now. I just got a new job two weeks ago, and it start time is six a.m. every morning. New job at your at yeah your current the employer. Plant. You don't want to say the name of probably your company. not probably not. That's but fine. The giant car plant. I can say that. Ben is a gainfully employed, successful, mm. single individual. Mm. I am employed. I don't know about successful. Dude, you have an awesome car. I do have an awesome car. You drive a, a black BMW <laughs> that I don't own. Yes. Well, we don't want to tip off who your employer is. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, have any, it doesn't have anything to do. It doesn't have anything to do with my employment, probably. Right. Right. <laughs> no, it's a slick car, man. Thank you. I love it. I call it the Batmobile. Yeah. I'm a nerd and it's yeah. black. Yeah. And I always wanted one. What model car is it? What's the name? A 330. 330? Yeah. How do BMWs, like, I don't know all the different models and, and things. Oh, I don't know anything about cars at all. And I work at a car place. Okay. Which is hilarious. None of my friends know why I work there. I don't know why I work there, but uh, I really, I've never liked cars. Like, I just don't give a shit. Really? I just, it's just so uninteresting to me. Like, like the different makes and models and stuff. Yeah, and like, like being a nerd about. Like my best friend, he is obsessed with cars and knows everything about cars and like, Oh, that's a 1963 Corvette or whatever. Like, yeah. And he'll even know, oh yeah, that's from the eighties this, this year or the model make uh -huh. like everything. And I, I just, 
I'm like, it's a, it's a blue truck. Yeah. That's what it is. It's yeah. an old blue truck or a new blue truck. That's yeah. what it looks like to me. So you don't like take pride in, in what you drive necessarily. You just happen I mean, to have a nice sweet car. I liked having a nice car and I do. So I hated driving like my old shitty car. Yeah. And I hated driving. And then I started driving the BMW and I was like, oh, this is actually like enjoyable to drive. What was the old shitty car you had? I have a 97 Ford Ranger. I still have it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Is that a pickup? It is a pickup. Okay. Five speed. Yeah. So you can, you can drive a manual. I can drive a manual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Woo. That's kind of, that's badass, dude. I guess so. <laughs> it I was think, free. I don't know if anybody cares anymore because all, basically all cars are automatic, but yeah. I used to think that was kind of like a swag thing. Like if you could drive a stick shift, like that's like, that was, yeah. yeah. It, it's kind of unnecessary now though. Like it, it's not really a skill you need. It isn't, but... I uh, I had a uh, Volkswagen Passat when I was in college, and that was a manual transmission. And when I learned to drive it, I felt sweet. Yeah. I felt like, dude. I mean, it's a it's a it wasn't fast at all. It was just like you had to know how to do it. But yeah. I kind of felt like uh, a man because I knew how to drive <laughs> a stick like a race car. Yeah, put the man in manual. Yeah, because everything I don't know how to do anything else like fixing like cars. With the car? Oh yeah, I don't. I'm not a mechanic well, aren't or, you an engineer yeah but i mean it's not so you don't know how to it's not the same thing as a mechanic okay what's the difference mm, it's more design design I mean, like, like i work more with like the electrical stuff in the car i'm an electrical engineer so it's okay. like it's not actually my job title but i do a lot of like electrical things in the car okay with the system um so that's different than like the functions of an engine functions of the engine yeah Gotcha. So it's, uh, it's different, different skill set. I gotcha. Those are the real men. Yeah, I'm the just, real men are the ones. Yeah, the real men are the ones. The grease who are on like, their hands. Yeah, those are the ones. <laughs> the girls go after. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do uh, girls like auto mechanics? I don't. There's I a don't Seinfeld know. episode where Elaine's really into like Putty because he's an auto mechanic. Hmm. I mean, I don't know if that's a true stereotype or not. I guess it's like, hey, I want a man who can fix something at least. Yeah. Like it may as well be a car. Yeah. Or. I want a girl that can fix cars. That'd be great. You do? <laughs> uh, no, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. No, that, but that'd be she funny. could be on the butch side of things if she could be an auto mechanic. Uh, no, I don't know. Mark Norman has a joke about, like, of course, some woman, he was like, I want, uh, I want a man who's uh, good with his hands. He's like, yeah, everybody wants that. <laughs> I would love to come home and my wife's like, hey, I built us a deck. <laughs> and he's like, great. I'll do the dishes. Yeah. I'll cook dinner is what he said. Yeah. That's funny. Like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Stereotypes it's a good joke. It. I would take that for sure. Yeah. I'm not yeah. handy at all. I don't do anything like outside of just what my job requires and, mm -hmm. and comedy. Like I pay people to fix shit. I don't oh, want yeah. to fix anything. When you have my, enough uh, money. What's that? When you have enough money, it's better. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I guess sometimes people like have to. Yeah. I'll pay people to fix my car and I, work at a car place but yeah. i have no idea yeah. and i don't care to learn yeah but all know. right so mechanic <laughs> or a, like this is the engineer. longest conversation i've ever had about cars and really I don't, you, like you don't cars. Care about cars. I don't care about cars all right yeah <laughs> i don't care about cars either i drive a piece of shit I, really what do you well, drive like, no i mean it's not it's a nice car but i beat the shit out of it it's oh, a subaru yeah, you told me about oil yeah or oh, actually oh. by the way not that i mean i um I thought my engine was about to die because I didn't change the oil. And uh, for how long? Ten thousand over. <laughs> I don't. At least maybe more. I didn't want to tell everyone he was dumb, but I am dumb. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It was stupid. But I, I went to the uh, Subaru dealership, and I think they're screwing uh, with me because they told me like a month ago, based on all the lights that came on the dashboard, that my vehicle was basically screwed, and that I needed like. Their only option oh, that they told me was we could take apart the entire engine to see what the damage is. But if we do that, the labor is this per hour and it would cost you two to three grand just to see what was wrong with it. And mm. we'll probably need a new engine. Mm. So they were like, well, you can either get a new car or basically drive it till it dies. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to drive it till it dies. Yep. And then I went to see about getting a new car. I thought it was going to die in like a day. But uh, I, it's been a month. Hasn't died. And I got another oil change yesterday from like a normal place. And the guy said, yeah, they were screwing with you. It was like, your car's fine. Really? Basically said, I mean, to clear the errors, it's going to take the replacement of a part. But 
it goes off synthetic oil, they said, and uh, oh my God. like you can go longer than they're letting you know. Yeah, and probably. It's like the it's tuna like, ship screws you, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like eating food after the expiration date, like a few oh, days yeah. later. It's like this yeah, is that, fine. That's a good out. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, this, the day it's after, fine, but they're like, yeah, the store wants you to buy new food, like a new whatever. Right. How I mean, long after the expiration date do you think you can go? Of oil. No, no, like it milk or something. Yeah. Milk? I, I don't know. A day. <laughs> milk would be like closer. <laughs> like, yeah. Close, but you know, like dry food. I mean, I see stuff expire and I'm like, eh, I'm poor. I'm going to eat this. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, yeah. I mean, I'll just drive it till it dies. Keep getting oil change. Maybe it'll be fine. Yeah. But it would be nice to clear the errors in the vehicle. That's stuff that I know about. Like yeah. clearing errors. How, do, what is, how does that work? I don't know how to do it. I just you know, know about it. <laughs> like, I know the behind the scenes of it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but, I don't know. Let's, Dude, let's switch time. Let's, I fucking hate cars. <laughs> you hate cars. I don't know why I don't care. No, so many no, people love cars and talk about it. No, I don't care. It's like, fine. Cars and coffee in the morning is a thing. And I'm just... Yeah, Jerry. Give me the coffee like, and this. Turn into like freaking Seinfeld show. Yeah, comedians yeah. Comedian. talking about cars, talking, drinking coffee, comedians talking shit about yeah. cars. Yeah, about oil coffee. changes. That's fucking <laughs> interesting. <laughs> That's changes. interesting. Oh my god. But dude, okay, so like you as a comic, I was thinking about this before you came over because like for people you who were don't sleeping before I came over, I was. You were dreaming about me being a comic. Yeah. Thanks, David. Yeah. <laughs> You and the gay shit, man. I swear. <laughs> David the- thinks I'm gay. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> well, this is what I'm about. But so to- many men think I'm gay. Well, this is You're not yeah. the only one. This is about what I was about to get into. <laughs> like, you're not gay, but you're not doing yourself any favors <laughs> about making it not. <sighs> yeah. And yeah, I was sleeping thinking because I was like, oh, I got to whatever. Prepare for what we're- I was going to ask you. But Uh-oh. your style, like, it's so weird. It's a unique style. Because of. you come across on stage very, like, smooth. Thank you. And very good delivery and all that. And you have, like, savage jokes. Yeah. I'm, usually real well, dark. I'm usually well-dressed. Yeah, well-dressed. Bill's the only one who dresses better than me. <laughs> oh, that's debatable. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think you dress better than Bill. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. No, they both do. But then uh, savage jokes are kind of like a Jezeldick mm-hmm. style. But also, you were, like, one of the biggest quirky nerd type yeah metrosexual <laughs> guys <laughs> i'm not threatening so, i'm not a threatening presence right well i really like it like the mix of all that cuz like i've never seen that in one person usually if you're like a, a savage so. dark joke writer you'd be like jeselnik all the way mhm like Jezelnik his, his would never presence. come out on stage to Caillou <laughs> <laughs> that's my intro could you explain your intro song and so like I, <laughs> So I always ask to go up to the Caillou theme song because... What is Caillou? Because oh, I didn't know this at first. Joke? Um, explain, yeah, explain to the folks at home what Caillou <laughs> is. So Caillou, um, I looked this up and it's considered one of the worst shows ever made. And people hate it because there's no um, educational... It's a kid's show and there's literally no educational value to the show at all. It's just Is a it little, a little Asian kid? Uh, I don't think he's Asian. I think he's white. Or mixed, I don't know. But he's it looks like a white kid. He's like a nondescript. He's a nondescript. He's a bald, like five year old. All he does is whine. Every line of dialogue, he's whining to his parents. He just complains and then eventually like kinda gets what he wants. And then that's the episode. There's no like (laughs) character development. He never learns anything. And then it people hate it. Like there are rants on the internet about like how There's like Caillou hate groups. Yeah, yeah. Like it's so bad. It went on for seasons. We watched it growing up because we grew up poor, <laughs> so all we had was like PBS, PBS. So PBS that, kids, dude. I, I mean, like we had Arthur. basic cable too. Arthur, that Arthur was, was that's good. what I was going to compare that, it to. That's that's a fine show. Yeah, I like, loved Arthur. Yeah, um, we watched uh, one of my favorite shows was Cyber Chase. Kind of, I was a little too old, but my siblings loved it and I liked it too. And uh, Gilbert Gottfried voiced one of the characters in Cyber Chase. In Cyber Chase, he just died a few days ago. Yeah, as of this like, recording. Out of this recording, yeah. R.I.P. So, so I go. Up, <laughs> so I go up to the Caillou song because I have a joke about my brother having cancer, and uh, <laughs> hopefully he'll. He has. He doesn't. He knows that I have the joke. He just hasn't seen it. Yeah. Um, hopefully he'll see it before this comes out. But yeah, I compare my brother to Caillou because Caillou is often compared to look like looking like he has cancer, and there's theory. There's like. 
fan theories about Caillou. It's like he gets what he wants because he's dying of cancer. So he's like, make a wish kid. That's it. Like, that's the whole show. He just gets what he wants and gets what he wants. And that's the whole show. Yeah. It's so stupid. Yeah. But I open up with that. And some people are like, when I walk up, they're like, oh, my God, that's Caillou. Like the song. Like people know it. And then I'll I'll explain. How many? I think it's a minority of people know the song. Everyone. So far, there have been at least four or five people at every show that knew what Caillou was. They're usually younger. But okay. like. Um, I say younger in their twenties. <laughs> it's so funny. You come out to Caillou, dude. I, <laughs> I think it's such a weird like because no one will do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no, for sure. I'm not saying. I think it's because Anthony. Yeah. I love Anthony Jeselnik, uh-huh. and um, but he's he would never tell a self deprecating joke, which is great. I mean, that's a style. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm like, oh no, make fun of me. This is fine. You can make fun of me, and I also want to be likable. Yeah, where Anthony doesn't give a shit if he's hated. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Because like I say, dark stuff. Or like a roast, but I I don't actually want to offend anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I don't want to offend some. I don't want to offend people, but it is offensive. Well, no, I, I think it's I think it's cool because like you're still like early on and figuring out how it's all mm-hmm. gonna work together and stuff. Yeah. But like yeah, the Caillou shit is funny because <laughs> especially because it it like dovetails into your brother having cancer. It's kind of like yeah. it, it sums up like your approach because so like <laughs> okay. Is it going to be Caillou playful clean comedy or is it going to be savage? Like, <laughs> Jesu- it's like both. Yeah. Like right out of the gate. So I don't know. I so think that's good. Yeah. I still remember the most offensive joke I ever heard you say. Oh, say it. Well, I'm not going to okay, perform well, tell me the what joke, it was. but it okay. was the Kobe Bryant Halloween costume <laughs> yeah. joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's I think I saw you at Habiba's. Yeah. A while ago. That was and, my closer for like all of October. Do you tell? Are like you planning on telling that joke anymore, or, pro, or probably um, hanging that one up? I don't know. I mean, it might. I like to do it around Halloween, so <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe a seasonal joke. A seasonal joke because yeah. it's a Halloween costume joke about yeah. Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> it's really offensive. Has uh, and I love it? Has the black audience member ever laughed at it? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, it's. Uh, I've I've heard I've gotten a I've few, heard black like, audiences get offended at Kobe jokes before. Oh yeah, well everyone <laughs> gets offended at something, I guess. So it's <laughs> well hell, I'm not even making fun of him for all the rape accusations. <laughs> like that's what people get the most upset about. They're like, shut up! I'm like he's fucking raped people. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, that's worse than the joke I'm talking about. Yeah. So yeah, um, isn't that funny how people like when you die, like people will just forget about all the bad shit you did sometimes. Yeah. Like they'll gloss over it. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason that kind of reminded me like the Will Smith thing, how like, uh, like oh, he just slaps Chris Rock. Oh, I was talking horrible. about horrible. I think yeah. most comics are Chris Rock side or whatever. Yeah. And then like, you know, a few minutes cool. later, they like just are, you know, applauding, standing ovation, yeah, standing giving ovation, him a speech, like, like blah, blah, blah. Like, nobody gives a shit about physical past indiscretions anymore i mean or it's very like selective as to like who they'll decide to like cancel or not it is and i mean that's a whole nother and i don't know about worms. kobe's rape accusations how serious those were um were those legit pretty legit compared to like I the rest he, of the me too oh i mean this was a long time before the me too movement right um i think they were legit i mean i think they probably didn't get much coverage because they weren't during the me too movement i think yeah. that happened later it would be a bigger deal. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it details, was like so he had wanna... an affair was what came out that he apologized for. Maybe. I don't, I also don't care about sports. <laughs> yeah. You're just like rejecting I'm not like all directions the man the conversation. Is, yeah, sorry. I'm not like the, you're a man and you like man things and I'm, I'm I appear as a I'm, man. Dude, no, I'm a man <laughs> boy. <laughs> a man I, boy. I need to grow up probably. Dude, I have so. a Peter Pan complex. I Do you really? It. Oh, Yeah. Oh my gosh! You, all of my high school and twenties have just been like, because I'm a nerd. I mean, I love like superheroes and Star Wars, yeah. and I also, I just I don't want to grow up. I hate it. I have in the past couple years, but that's I don't know. It, it's, um, I don't know where I was going with that. I have a <laughs> I have a Peter Pan complex. I don't want to grow up. I don't want to think about the future that I don't much. I think about the future. I including hate including where I'm taking this time. Like I don't want children. Like you don't? No, never. Okay. Never want kids and doesn't oh, want kids, ladies. That. <laughs> Sign no. up for a fun life. <laughs> so it's great dating in the Bible Belt because uh, you know, <laughs> uh, no women want kids down here. 
That's yeah, dude, I go back and forth on the Peter Pan co- complex thing. Yeah. Like, I obviously have one, too. Like, look at this place. Like, It's a single, eh? one bedroom apartment. Yeah. Dude, there's one for sale in this building. Yeah? I looked at it. Yeah? It's, it's too expensive. It's insanely expensive Yeah, it's now. ridiculous. Like, that's why I feel weird about, like, you know, sometimes people say, this place is so... I was like, yeah, I got it before. Mm, it blew up. Yeah. I would love to live here, but... Yeah, yeah. This, it's ridiculous what the market is. Yeah, but like Peter Pan complex, like I don't know. It Not just seems much. it seems weird. I actually felt way more pressure before the pandemic to like be at a certain place. Like, okay, I should be married by this age. Oh yeah, or kids. Yeah, After the you... pandemic, I kind of feel like shit went so insane that like convention uh, conventions kind of went out the window. Expectations of shit went out the window. Like everything's chaos. Yeah. So, like, I don't really care, even if some people, you know, like, I don't know. I remember even, like, the first year, like, people had to postpone all their weddings. Like, everybody's careers were radically different. Mm-hmm. Like, raising children was different. Everything was just so jacked up. It kind of was like a pause on, like, normal life at oh, every yeah. level. So, and then starting comedy and that. I'm just like, eh. And during that. Yeah. I'm fine just, like, doing <laughs> this yeah, for, it, for a while. It's tough trying to get over. I mean... I did it just fine, but trying to get over that like social norms and pressures of getting married and having kids a certain age. Yeah. I mean that it Do you still that feel fucks that? with a lot of people. No, I'm over it. I'm fine. When'd you get over it? <sighs> when I was younger. I mean Okay. I, yeah, I got over it sooner like than I was 20s, like, that's all Yeah, funny. like I I I'm still in my twenties, David. <laughs> yeah, so am I. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start hiding my age. I'm gonna be like Yeah. Yeah. You're 10 years older than Jacob. I'm not telling what Jacob's age is. Jacob Nolan's a huge Jacob Nolan. fucking <laughs> cunt face. <laughs> He's yeah, fucking well Jacob said. Nolan. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, yeah. Um, Just, no, I got over it kind of soon. Plus, I... It was all kind of in the same, like... Like, I was raised very Southern, Christian, conservative home. Uh-huh. And so, like, getting over that as I aged was also getting over like not that my parents ever pressured me to get married at a certain time, but just the social norm of like yeah. church and like, okay, they didn't like, have you to say it, get married, having kids, it. but you, you, yeah, they it's don't have the, to say it. You don't you have to say it at all, but that's, I mean, hell they even left several like churches cause of stupid pressure shit like that. Yeah. So, uh, and yeah. a lot of people do. I mean, that's pretty Yeah. We common. bounced around like, to different churches growing up. Yeah. Cause, cause I mean, of disagreements just, with different things yeah, or right. like, pastors which is, which is sleeping so with somebody or the church is stealing money all that mm-hmm. stuff happens God. but yeah so you, so you got over it uh just kind of in a whole big chunk over it. it took years i mean it wasn't like a yeah wake up thing but it took three four years to kind of be like okay i'm <laughs> it's okay if i'm not married before 30 or whatever especially not having not wanting kids like yeah, that really opens up your window. Yeah, God, it's less. <laughs> I googled it. It's less than four percent. Less than four percent of women don't want children. <laughs> I was like, okay, great. That could grow though. It could grow, especially. I mean, millennials are having less kids. Yeah. In general, I mean, it's not. I don't want them, but a lot of people can't financially afford them. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so. weird. It kind of flipped. Like now, kids are like expensive to have. Like if mm-hmm. you want kids, it's like another thing. Mm-hmm. It's like another possession almost before you had to have kids to like work on the farm <laughs> yeah, it was like to survive or to just prolong the species like the it chores. was like a necessity to like a luxury kind yeah. of yeah oh think. wow it's a luxury to have kids now yeah it Whoa, is oh that's good that's pretty good is that a good that's pretty that a good little premise <laughs> it's a luxury to have children yeah it's like the opposite like we might have a kid but like hmm. before like you needed them and it was like playing the odds like a lot of kids would die during oh, childbirth. Yeah, you had Ten kids, so or the mom would die during childbirth a lot more, um, if she was lucky. If she, <laughs> <laughs> so much I hate kids. <laughs> I'd rather die. <laughs> I'd rather you'd rather die as the man during childbirth. <laughs> I'd rather, yeah. You hoping for an accident? Uh, yeah, just something. <laughs> like just, you just trip and fall. In the I'm ignoring all safety precautions in the hospital. You pass out when you see her. Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> When I you see imagine. the baby's head start to come oh, out, you pass out, hit your head, thing. and die. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, dude, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it is changed though. People are having fewer kids. I think women still want to have kids at a deep biological level, though. I think not all still, of them. Not all of them. No, not all of them. 
No, 4%. Because it's <laughs> 5%. And that's even less than like the Bible Belt. Yeah. God, it, yeah. it's awful. Uh, no, I don't think. I mean, biologically, everyone, not everybody, but biologically, I mean, you're, you're supposed to want to procreate. Do guys actually to want to want... have a baby or do they just get really horny? And that's like the, that's well, like that's the, what that's it is, like the lever. That horny is the biological, like <laughs> it's to mate. Like, it, yeah. like that's what. Uh, yeah, so but the guys everyone. aren't thinking about what it leads to. They're not thinking about the baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they're per not. Per se. They're just thinking about, getting, thinking about getting it. Uh, yeah, Louis C.K. has a joke about that actually, where he's he's like, "I want a fucking baby." Like that's what that's what being horny is like. <laughs> it is. I mean, a biological. Oh, I want yeah. a baby. I mean, it's it's uh, or like what men find physically attractive, like uh, the form of the you know, the lady. Yeah, it's like, it's would she be a good mother? Like voluptuous, like breasts and big breasts. And that's a that's a thing with it, like it's like oh my gosh my she, baby would suck on those so good like, it's called um lizard brain lizard brain so lizard brain is a lot of um just basic functions and of humans and just like um things we kind of don't think about or just do naturally it's called lizard brain so like you don't know you don't break down why you like big breasts yeah it's it's a subconscious like yeah she will not have a problem feeding my child it's yeah. not what you're thinking about because yeah. you just go ah tits <laughs> yeah but like yeah it that is a a real scientific thing lizard brain it, it, there's a bunch of stuff that's in lizard brain like um it's a cool it's a cool term that like encompasses a bunch of just things we do and we don't know why we do them sure it's just sure. so natural it's just your animal programming <clears throat> right yeah. yeah so yeah and I've I've read some stuff on that. I, I, well, so lizard brain is that like somebody's branding of it? Um, or is no, that I think just that's a kind of you, the, a general term. I think people. it is a general like uh. scientific term used. I mean, it's similar with like a big strong man. It's he will protect my babies. Sure, is what sure s- similarly falls into yeah. that. Yeah, I mean it. And people, you can kind of move past it. Like I don't, I do not want children. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've moved past it. I, I. Um, why no don't instinct. you want? There's why no don't instinct. you want kids? Oh, they're the worst. God, they're the worst. They're so <laughs> annoying. They're just, they're gross. They're annoying. They just, they put your life. Your life comes to an end when you have a child. You have to start a new life, with having a child and I do not want to do that. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is you're a selfish asshole. I'm a selfish asshole. No, I, I feel I, that. I, I feel think that. they're annoying. Yeah. I genuinely don't enjoy the presence of kids. <laughs> it just, it drive they drive me crazy. Like they're gross and the sticky hands and they shit on themselves. And like <laughs> you have to take care of them for years and years. And like, you don't get sleep the first year. <sighs> anyway, just, yeah. Except, uh, what should I, except any nieces and nephews I might have. I love them. <laughs> I do have a nephew. He's great. Nice. But yeah, I have nieces. I love them. Yeah. They're great. I could. <laughs> um, yeah. But you know, lizard brain, it might kick in. Like mm. if it was your kid, like your biological I mean, program, but you sure, just don't want to go down that road. I, yeah, I, I would take care of if I had a child, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> dude it's funny i think you view kids the same way i kind of view getting a dog like oh, i won't get a dog either yeah. right well the reason i say i don't get a dog is because i uh i know i would love the dog like crazy and i would feel so guilty if i neglected it but i would be so torn by like all the other shit i want to do that dude, like you have no freedom with the dog yeah i have so many friends with a dog and they yeah. can't ever do anything right like hey and you i, I go still get... love i would love the dog but i don't even want to enter that into my <sighs> life i don't want to bring it in because then i would just have you, you have know, to walk it I would two feel... times a day yeah you have to feed it two times a day you yeah. have to all your life is based every single day around the dog schedule yeah that maybe, drives me crazy yeah maybe you're not like maybe you actually hate kids and dogs oh yeah i'm not a dog person you don't like dogs i'm either. also a little allergic so that's kind of my excuse but i genuinely <laughs> don't like dogs all, they, all you do is just take care of them they shed everywhere your clothes and belongings are i think you should in, write about this in, for the stage for, do you know how many people like dogs Everyone, like everyone likes of dogs. People, you would be the minority. Oh That's why it's so funny. God, there's against the grain take. Just write a <laughs> write a manifesto about why dogs and babies suck. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and it's and so many single girls own a pet, 
Every girl I've ever met who le- lived alone. Do you think that's like a basic thing a for a girl to like have a pet? Like, I don't know. It's, I, I, I just think it's personality based. I mean, it's like, oh, maybe not lonely, but like, I want to come home to something. Yeah. That loves me. Sure. I mean, that's, I mean, a lot of single guys own pets too. Same thing. It's, it's, I don't want that. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I, you have to go home every day. All the time. I've just, I've made so many plans. I'm an extrovert, huge extrovert. Yeah. And I've made so many like plans or text people and they're like, I can hang out for an hour. Then I have to go home and take care of my dog. I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. It sounds awful. Yeah. And then they just don't go back out. Yeah. I, uh, it's so interesting because I feel like I should want to have a kid. Uh, yeah. but, but. I hear all the things you're saying, and I think yeah. I might agree with them, so I'm like not decided. <laughs> but I there was a couple I saw uh, out at uh, <laughs> gather. I don't think they listen, so <laughs> you know them. Yeah, this isn't going to be that negative. But okay, the they recently annoying. had a baby. Right? Okay, like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> good for them. I want people to be happy. Do the, what you want. The baby. have that. Tiny little sex trophy, if you want to. Sex trophy. Uh, that's not original. I, I <laughs> told that from something. That's okay. Sex <laughs> trophy. That's great. Uh, oh God. It, yeah, I mean, you could prove you had sex in other ways. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No one doesn't think. I want to get a sex NFT. Like, <laughs> sex NFT. A GIF of us doing it, and it can't be faked. Uh, <laughs> ever than a baby. No. Um. Anyway, so I saw them out, and I just was trying to like honestly analyze like okay obviously they're like are they happy yeah but are they really happy are they like, really happy so what they wanted i think they are but also you know they were really happy to be out with yeah. the baby and they're really happy like you can't go out you know like at one point one of them was like you know maybe time to get back and then um the mom was like, I'm, I'm going to finish my beer. Like, I want to stay for, like, you know, enjoy this. I haven't been able to drink in a year. Yeah. <laughs> I want to drink this beer. <sighs> yeah. So, in a way, I thought maybe, like, maybe there's a part of them that's, like, you know, regretting. Not regretting, but, like. Uh, well, it's also getting through that worst part. I know, like. True. You, yeah. It's like, oh, it's so worth it when your five-year-old yeah. runs up and hugs you. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> That's five years of misery <laughs> for that hug. <laughs> I told you. It's so okay. It's, yeah, all like this, all the, all the shitty nights of like no sleep and like your no freedom or social life are worth it for five years There's later like, when she comes up and hugs you. It's I've heard I've heard the same example be used so often. There's like three like uh, uh, positives. It's yeah. like the love of a child. <laughs> When, when you come home after an exhausting day and you have four kids, like, oh, that sounds awful. What? Like, there's like three positives and I just, like, I could write a, my book about all the negatives of children. Like the three positives of everything. Yeah. It's like, Dude. You, get, you get to watch them grow up. Great. What? <laughs> I don't know. You just don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I'd rather watch a TV show with good character development. You could watch them grow up, too. A ten years. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen Boyhood? They actually did that. The movie oh, takes I know place over ten about. years. Yeah, yeah. The same kids. You'd rather watch a TV show than have a kid. <laughs> than have a kid. Yeah, I, it's just. I don't Dude, know. this is incredible. <laughs> I do not like kids. You know, I, I keep going. There's some truth in this for sure, dude. I don't know. That, like, I don't. I don't know if I want to be that cynical, but also, uh, Jim Gaffigan has a joke I saw recently. Mm-hmm. He's got like six kids or something. Mm-hmm. Well, he said something about how kids talk shit, and. uh how it's pretty ironic considering like you ruined my entire life. <laughs> I sacrificed my entire life for you. Yeah. So <laughs> kids yeah, are like, Oh, ew, dad. Ew, they, like, I don't want to be uh, a sister. Like, Fuck you, kid. I, I could have done something completely different with my life. Um, <laughs> yeah. And they're not grateful until they're an adult or until they have kids. Like I've heard that. It was like, Oh, I didn't appreciate my parents until I had yeah. kids. It was I'm like, still not grateful. Took you, I'm yeah. Still. Yeah. <laughs> My I'm parents, st- my parents still fucked up raising me. I'm st- no, they're good. My parents. Are I'm great. still blaming my psychological trauma. They're like, <laughs> we did our best, you asshole. We didn't have to create you. Yeah, I think oh that is gosh. ironic. How therapy, like, they, they typically ends up blaming your parents and yeah, your upbringing. Pretty much. I but mean, the, but the flip side of that is like, you know, they didn't have to have you. And they're all yeah. They created you. God, why'd you guys have to have me? 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah, blaming him for that. <laughs> um, you know, so for all the flaws of a you know shitty upbringing, they they did sacrifice a lot just to like keep you alive. Yeah, which is fine, but also that's their choice. They chose to do that. I mean, that's that's kind of on them if. If you have a baby, you're like, why aren't you grateful? It's like, well, you chose to have me, like, or a kid, like, yeah. And so and I guess I was thinking exist. like, <laughs> no, I, was, I guess huh. earlier I was thinking like, if you, you like your kid appreciates you when they're in their 30s and have kids, you have to wait that long for them to appreciate you. Like Jim Gaffigan's like 10 year old is like, ah, you gross dads. You have to deal with that for 20 years. Like high school, middle school, like everyone's like, oh, my parents are lame. My parents are lame. I mean, you, and you'd ever get appreciated. So that's another thing is like... You're we're we're painting with a pretty broad brush here. I love my I parents. So. I mean... No, I do. You do yeah. too? Yeah, I love your parents too. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> yeah, you met my dad. I, I met your dad. He liked me. Yeah, yeah. He liked, Yeah, he thought you were funny. He thought everybody else sucked ass, but he thought that was funny. It's kind of true, actually. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. He liked more than just that, but it's an open mic, so... I made fun of... I made a joke about your dad being there. Yeah, what did you say again? Uh, it was like... Um... I'm. I don't want. I told a joke, and I was like, "My parents have never heard that joke, which is why they're so proud of me." I would never want to make them disappointed. Like, bring my father to a comedy show, <laughs> and then I like looked at you and your dad when I said that. And the other comics knew your dad was there, so they all laughed. Yeah, like, yeah. You laughed too. I did. I um, did because it's like I'm no better way to like it. make your parents ashamed of you than taking <laughs> a fucking open mic. <laughs> Like either it goes well or horrible, if, or you're definitely saying horrible shit. Especially so. if you're, I, I would be afraid to be like, this is my friend, uh, you know, Jacob Noland, and then they see his act and they're like, yeah, you need new friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jacob, what an asshole, Jacob what Noland. An asshole. Sorry, I keep what, saying what a his huge, name. What a huge piece of shit. Yeah, he tries to sleep with me a lot. Jake, Jacob, Nolan. yeah, 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 he's gay for real. <laughs> he's, he's one of those guys. He's real. like Tim Dillon who puts like a tough exterior on, but he <laughs> loves this fucking. <laughs> Sorry, he's gay. You're afraid to say dudes. He's afraid to say. Oh, he loves dudes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just pissed he hasn't been coming to mics lately. Yeah. Damn it, Jacob. Yeah. You're one of the best. Yeah. As yeah. far as uh, like especially how new he is. Yeah. Like, same with other. There's other comics. You just had, or I just saw Kyle Oren on here. Kyle, dude. He's great, and he just started. Yeah. Like. I see him do new a new five minutes all the time, and it's really? always like decent. Really? I mean, like every couple of weeks. Yeah, 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 dude. Jealous of those people that are just good at stand up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm not good I'm at stand up. Painfully, yeah, painfully <laughs> bad. I hate over time. myself. Do you hate like watching a video of yourself doing stand up? Or no, listening? I love watching myself. <laughs> I love watching all of it. <laughs> Of course I hate it. <laughs> okay, good. I figured. I We hate it too. David. I do. Okay, I, I do like it. Like, okay, right after, sometimes I'll watch it. If I think mm-hmm. the set went well, I'll like to like go and like, okay, let me see if it. Mm-hmm. The laughs. Yeah. See if they're, they're But real. like if I wait 24 hours, then I'm like, I don't want to press play on this. I But I ha- I kind of have. I force myself to. Because no. you got to kind of know how it's coming across. It's just like whatever. And also doing this stuff. Like I have to see myself. Yeah, doing editing whatever and editing and stuff. You get used to it, and then you start to really like feel yourself. I I hate my <laughs> I hate my voice. I hate my stage presence. <sighs> I'm getting better. That's like the one thing I'm working on is stage presence. And I oh, hate. So what are you trying to do? Just like I'm. All, I'm always different on stage. Either I'm like sometimes I'll just like be sad like this. Like uh, that's pretty rare. Or sometimes I'll be like kind of happy and like yeah. pointing or. Yeah, walking around. Uh, yeah. I, it's just there's always like a different cadence that I have, yeah. and I'm trying to figure out what's best. Like I try to adjust on that cadence because my jokes are dark, yeah. but it was I don't know. I came across as more of an asshole, and I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm not an asshole. I'm a, I'm I nice. Mean, you hate and I kids, want people. So. I hate children and dogs. No woman is ever gonna date me after listening to no, this. No, they will because it's <laughs> honest, dude. I guess so. There's gonna be a like a nice barren woman for you. Barren woman. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that term in so long. Yeah. A barren looking for nice barren woman. That's what I <laughs> that's what I need to put. Yeah. 
Or you could just give yourself a vasectomy preemptively. <laughs> be like, I'm real serious about this. That's a Seinfeld episode too. Oh, uh, yeah, vasectomy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elaine says she doesn't want to have kids, and then yeah, it's good. It's um, good male birth control. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, so okay, so you're trying to figure out your stage presence and stuff. Um. Yeah, yeah. You just need to do a billion mics. I think. I guess <laughs> the only way to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, and I and just not give a shit and just do. Mm-hmm. I don't know, because uh, then I think just eventually, just like what you really want to say just comes out automatically. Because mm-hmm. you do so many of them, you don't give a shit about the what what's what's happening around you as much. You're not like uh, trying to engineer things as yeah. carefully. You're just like, fuck. E- <laughs> essentially, it just becomes some sort of elevated version of yourself. Yeah, on stage for most people, not everyone, but like for most, it's just this is kind of just an elevated. This is the theatrical version of me yeah on stage like yeah. it's still me yeah because i want to be likable i want to go up there like i usually smile while yeah. i tell a joke or jesselnick smiles doesn't he He smiles but it's more of a it's more of a, a smirk smirking like yeah it'll Eagle he only smile. smiles after a punchline when people are laughing and he's like oh you can i've had this feeling before where it was like like i made you do that like i made you laugh like yeah. i like I had this like control over you to involuntary involuntarily do something. Right. I don't know it. I had it like once or twice where I was like, "Whoa, that felt like almost powerful." I don't think about it all the time. You like pulled it out of them. I like, pulled it like, out. They of didn't them. want to laugh, but you made them. Yeah, it was one of those like. Yeah. Because I just it was a couple dark jokes in a row, uh-huh. but I came out likable, and then yeah. like I just pulled this, and you can tell there was like this weird like they didn't want to and they still did and then they felt bad about laughing <laughs> and then i like kept going with it and they nice. were and they Do you uh, remember what joke it was you don't have to burn the joke for this but i'm, no, I'm that's just okay. curious um wow it was probably the one with um the i think it was like an atheist joke because <laughs> like, it's the south i think it was and they were like it was a ooh and then a laughter yeah and because it's like oh yeah he's telling a joke that yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. is against everything in our culture down here yeah anthony jeselnik has a quote that says a groan is is a laugh for pussies pussies. that's good (laughs) that's funny yeah I, i wish i could remember the joke exactly i think i think it's the one where i was like they actually exist the comedians actually exist yeah they're jealous. It was um, God's jealous so of them, not because the, they're funnier than because they. It's the joke is, um, like we've lost a lot of good comics recently. Uh, Betty White, Bob Saget, Norm Macdonald, Gilbert Godfrey, Gilbert Godfrey. I think God took them from us too soon, and I've heard that God is a jealous God. Uh, so it makes me think, like He was jealous of them, not because they were funnier than it. Oh, I fucked it up. It was. I've heard God has a sense of humor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. We lost a lot of good comics recently. I think God took them from us too soon. I've heard God has a sense of humor, which makes me think he might have been jealous. Not because they're funnier than him, but because they actually exist. <laughs> yeah. And it gets a laugh. Yeah, man. it does. It's, it's, and uh, then I had the people... tag that I made up on the spot. I was like, how'd you like that, Bible Bell? Yeah. And yeah. then um, Jeff likes, likes that tag. And then you said... You heard somebody say below um, the Bible below belt. the Bible belt. Yeah, an audience member said that. I've never heard yeah. you use that tag. I don't know. If I did it too, once. I don't know if it's co- too corny or not. It, it didn't land when I did it, but I could do it again. Like is it's kind of corny. Belt? It is kind of. The audience member said below the Bible below, below the, the Bible belt. It's it's funnier like organically. It's, just, it's fine throwing a corny line out there every once in a while. Even like yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. At, when I started doing comedy, it was all corny stuff. I did yeah. so many puns. Yeah. So many fucking puns. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I quit for a while because I hated all the jokes. Like, I listened puns. back and I was Dude, like. puns suck, man. <laughs> I, love fun. I like puns. I, 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 yeah. I puns are great. I guess you could. 
they were just mine were just so cheesy and yeah. painful yeah for sure but i like them mark norman does puns on his podcast i mean they, they all yeah like I, that, dimitri martin has when i listen puns. to mark norman and joe list like tuesday's stories mm. i feel like guilty ours like when we do ours it's like not funny all the time like it'd be like oh coffee cup cup balls <laughs> fuck i'm gay jizz like, <laughs> i don't know how they do that <laughs> they've done 400 episodes man like yeah that's ridiculous like, i mean they, they keep it to an hour every time and they talk about stuff that's just happened in their week but like well you i mean you find someone that you have a good um chemistry back and forth I mean, like that yeah. my i work with my best friend and he and i are we think we're the funniest people yeah. in the world oh and people at work also think we're funny so it's not just <laughs> us people love us i mean we Bed's have funny, we people. have perfect beds funny i'm funny at work not on stage He's so funny <laughs> no you're funny. come see me at work <laughs> <laughs> come see me uh, yeah and it's a lot of roasting each other but we have yeah, such great. perfect chemistry like he and i just yeah the the flow cause it's like a 10 hour day and we never get sick of it and yeah. Uh, I mean, people have come be like, I'm having a shitty day. Make me laugh. And we'll just like do something. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny. He's, he's funnier than I am, but he would never get on stage. Don't neg. Don't neg yourself. Oh no. That's. Okay. Would Jeselnik neg himself? No. <laughs> but I'm not Jeselnik. Uh, I live in Greenville, yeah, South Jessel Carolina. sucks, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, shit. What was I, where was I going with that? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Tuesdays with stories, yeah. Mm-hmm. They talk about puns. I love puns. It's it's conversation they, candy, right? A pun I, naturally, I think, is better than a planned pun. Yeah, usually. Yeah. So like, if we were just talking and I made a pun and it was like, oh, a clever like thought, uh-huh. like that's better than on stage. You're like preparing to say it and you say it and then the audience is like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those that's, are the worst. That's what, yeah, <laughs> those are the worst reactions. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yep. Yeah, you kind of have to be self-aware when you use those on stage. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know this is stupid, but yeah. I guess I do have a pun or two. Yeah, I have still. a few. I have a few. I still have a few, but I think they're 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 so like fucked up that it's you forget it's a pun because of just like how offensive the joke is. Or yeah, or like you try to surprise is. them with it. If the surprise is and it's like not the main part of the joke, mm-hmm. but just like in there, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe who freaking knows? I don't know what I'm talking about. It. There no um I, I know what you're talking about. There was a what was it? Some comedian was saying like puns are fine, but it's the structure of the joke. If you end on a pun, most people are gonna moan. Oh, what was the example? It was um I think it was Rodney Dangerfield. He said my wife's a great housekeeper. When we got divorced, she kept the house. <laughs> like it's a good joke, but if you swapped it the other way, um like. We got divorced and my wife kept the house. I guess you could say she's a good housekeeper. Like, that's that, like, cringy pun. Yeah. But the other way, you, you forgot it's a pun. Like, yeah. It's a, it's How a did funny, say it the first way again? The first way is, um, it's like, my wife, she's a great housekeeper. You know, like, my, Rodney Dangerfield. My wife, yeah. She's yeah. A Sam Morrill can do a good impression. We got divorced. She, got the, she kept the house. <laughs> she, so you got no respect. <laughs> No respect at all. So it's a good joke when you say That's it that true. way. That's really It's still true. a pun. And it's still really tight. It's not like... It's like, still tight, yeah. I Sam's, was thinking that not ending on a pun, like he would expound on it after. Mm-hmm. But, um, but no, yeah, it's don't, just the... Don't end on the pun. Use it in the setup. And then people forget it's a pun by the time the punchline rolls around. But it, you still remember it. But yeah. anyway, Sam Morrell can do a great Rodney Dangerfield impression. Yeah. You know, people don't respect me. <laughs> I don't get no respect. No respect. <laughs> That was his big <laughs> stick. I love Rodney. Yeah, dude. I love the Norm story about Rodney Dangerfield mm-hmm. on SNL. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's somebody somebody asked, like, I think they were trying to like screw with Rodney Dangerfield. Like saying, you know, uh do you ever get some respect though? Like uh like they wrote a sketch like like counter to that. Like you must that, that must not always be true. Like, get some respect. No, no, I don't get respect. No, I don't get respect. And then he like got off camera and, and he was like, oh, what the fuck? Doesn't he know my thing? No respect. Like, that's my thing. Like, what the fuck's this guy talking about? I got no respect. Um, that's my thing. Yeah. I don't know. I just maybe butchered that story. But anyway. Uh, and then he also told Norm one time. He said, I'll tell you, kid. Show business is nothing but a bunch of bullshit. It's nothing about waiting around. That's all it is is waiting. <laughs> waiting that, you're yeah. on a movie set it's just waiting that's all it is kid waiting the only thing that's good about this is stand-up 
That's that's the thing. Then a few minutes later, he comes back to Norm and he's like, "Stand up and shit." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, God, I love Norm Macdonald. Yeah, it's great. Is he your favorite? Yeah, he is. Yeah, was your favorite? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Was he's dead? He he's doesn't dead. exist anymore. <laughs> and based on your worldview, like he's definitely <laughs> not coming back. There's That's no spirit of Norm. Most likely, he's yeah. not looking down. It's possible. He is rotting in the ground. It's possible, but uh, unlikely. And that's all that there is. So you don't believe in God? Actually, that's a good topic. Yeah, we could go into that. Yeah, why don't you believe you in God? Bro? You seem to. <laughs> is, we're filming this on Easter weekend. <laughs> You're like, what a worthless holiday. <laughs> what are these idiots going to the church? Hey, I, I had off work yesterday, so that was nice. Like, pray to the Easter, so buddy. Thanks. It's about as similar. <laughs> thanks, Judas, for the holiday off. Uh, <laughs> did you think of that? No. I wish I did. I just saw that joke yesterday. Oh, my gosh. It was gosh. a tweet by somebody. That's funny. Like, Fuck, that's good. It's like to thank Judas for the... Thanks, Judas, for the... Uh, I was yeah, I was off yesterday because of Easter. If he didn't betray Christ, it would never have happened. <laughs> I had to work yesterday. <laughs> so do, do people I, get Monday off? Yeah, a lot of people do get Monday off. Okay. I don't know if it's a bank holiday necessarily, but no, I work Monday. Yeah. So they gave us Good Friday, um, which was nice. Okay, and then we I'll just be at work. All anyway, tell me about your atheism. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm more of a, a agnostic, but like okay. a very cynical agnostic because I hate religion. So like, uh, it's agnostic is it's possible that there is something out there, a higher power. I don't know what agnostic is, but okay. Sorry. I'm the color <laughs> explaining for whoever might be. I don't know. A lot of people don't. It's people think it's just atheism. No, I got you. I got but you. I do lean more towards like, yeah, there's probably nothing. <laughs> um, but it is the, okay. It's possible. There's something out there. Uh, another dimension a higher power a being or like just something on the spiritual realm yeah it's possible it's just something i don't think is worth spending a lot of time on dwelling on too much because you don't know you can spend your whole life believing in something and which is great it's fine it's a comfort thing for a lot of people but yeah. i think it's an excuse for a lot of people to do just like shitty things i mean one reason i'm not religious is because of the entire history of religion <laughs> like just have you ever googled yeah, anything few, about few black guys what the... any religions ever done i mean like catholics and protestants have fucking murdered each other for hundreds of years i mean england's pretty famous for that yeah. and i mean just the treatment of women in any religion Except for maybe Buddhism. I don't know anything about it, but they seem to be pretty chill. <laughs> like the treatment of women in any religion is, yeah. including Christianity, is, is kind of subjugated. And there's so many pedophilic priests out there. Like, yeah. I have a joke about that. Like, it's. Yeah. Dude, people, that's a big like, knock. It's a huge issue. That's a big knock. It's like, not just issue. pedophilic I mean, priests, but to me, like, any church leader that has, like, moral, Joel like... Joel Osteen or whatever. Yeah, megachurch pastors. Yeah, megachurch. Like, anybody who, Fuck like... those people. You know, pilfers their congregation for money. Is that the word? Pilfers. Yeah, I, I think so. I yeah. Um, I, I just hate it. Like, it's just so... That cool. show, The Righteous Gemstones, that shows it, the, the hypocrisy of, like, you know, sports cars, mansions, all that... And, uh, I, and I'm fine. Like, I, I, have I, no, I have a real problem with all that. Because, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. like, because, like, organized religion is what the, is the term I use. Organized yeah. religion. Well, like, it doesn't really have a good track record. Like, I think the modern <laughs> knock is like there's a lot of desperate uh, people because life is hard, so they look for it answers, and then the people that provide the answers get money from the people looking for answers. Mm -hmm. And I'm like. That That's something's fucked percent. up about that. Forget about the merits of the, the theology itself. Yeah, hundred percent. And then before it was kind of like, I don't know if the people, the nation states actually believed what they were conquering in the name of, you know, like I don't know if Constantine was like crazy, <laughs> actual, devoted, personal Christian. He's one of power. But like, this is like the best system to spread to make oh, myself my more powerful. If, if so, like they're killing each other in the name of a political idea. It's like today, like I feel like political ideologies. And still like, I don't know how much time people think about why they're Republican. They're just like, I'm a Republican. I fight the Democrat or I'm a Democrat. Yeah, I, I fight the Republican. Yeah. They don't spend a lot of time thinking about maybe what they actually. Red versus blue. Yeah. No, it's 
such a good, yeah, it's a good example. I, and I'm fine with people who are religious. Like I have no problem with religious people, like especially like trying to believe well, something. A lot of religious people that actually have good lives. That are good people, stuff. good lives. And like you believe something that's great. And like, I also just think this is me being raised in the church. Everyone's so fucking hypocritical, so hypocritical. And that's not a profound statement. Every, people know that like, but I've just never like they live one way on a Sunday morning and then a different way. Yeah, and even if you vaguely live your life according to what you preach, you still, there's still much hypocrisy in the church and just, and I don't know that the hypocrisy is a bad thing. I mean, it's uh, human nature. Which when is I fine, I guess. Well, I just mean that, um, like, like I was thinking, shaking your finger at somebody or yeah, you know, turning around and doing it. Yeah. Like you definitely shouldn't do that. If you, if you've, you know, if you sin yourself, you shouldn't be like giving other people shit. But, uh, I was just, so I'm fine. It's with, like, hard to make it work in real life. Mm-hmm. It's hard to like actually live by. And when you start to try and do it, sometimes I feel like if people are honest, they're like, this isn't really jiving with, you know, living in a modern day, like uh, 2022 America, like you, you know, the world, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying exactly. It's just like, it's it's really hard and it feels hard because maybe it's not, that, that's not the right way to go about it. You yeah, know what I mean? I guess. Like, like it's not. <laughs> I also, I think it's interesting. Like to, I've been way happier without it in a way, <clears throat> uh, without the day to day. You can pursue. Yeah. Well, you can, you don't feel the pressure of being perfect all the time yeah i don't hate myself for any little misstep any little misstep anything yeah i mean there's so much i mean i'm a douchebag so (laughs) i also think it's insane that so many people believe like this is the bible this is the word of god i believe this to be 100 percent true okay have you read 100 percent of it for most people it's a no no i haven't read all of it it's like Mm -hmm. oh but you believe it to be 100 percent true and you have not read 100 percent of it like you read the good parts but there's so many great fucking like, awful stories. Like the homophobic in the Bible. Story parts. Oh, like the homophobic. The good parts. The, jo- the joke. <laughs> 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 I have a joke. It's um, it was um, that's a good one. Dude. I was raised religious, uh, you know, like all the uh, like anti anti gay, uh, anti interracial dating, <laughs> pro genocide, all the good stuff that's in the Bible. Because <laughs> <laughs> all that shit's in the Bible. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think the Bible does have a lot of great, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good analogies. I don't, even like, like, I don't like that argument. Don't murder. Religion. I think the Bible is actually thanks, pretty Bible. incredible. Um, incredible? Mm-hmm. The, the criticisms I'm kind of more like serious about when it comes to religion are like how out of touch modern day organized religion is. I don't even think it's close yeah. to what the actual Bible itself is or what God, if he does exist, like kind of has in mind for a human living. Today. Sure. So like, or at I'm any point in time, at that. any point in time, I would say, like, yeah. also all the good stuff that's in the Bible is also in the Quran. Like all the good analogies and stories. That's true. Like, um, sure. Allah, Allah sure. and God are the same thing. They just disagree that who is the Messiah or there was Jesus or, um, Muhammad. Sure. Like it's all that. There's so many parallels. Like there are so many things. I line get up. it, dude. I've heard all of these arguments, and and like I, not that they're not valid. Yeah. Like to me, those didn't resonate as much to my it's current fine. criticisms, which are basically, um, <laughs> I've talked about this before. I don't no, know, I know. I don't want to. You almost it. always talk about religion with like whoever you're. Yeah, <laughs> I'm interested. Well, people should talk about it. I guess. Yeah, that's fine. But it's always about you know trying a different thing mm-hmm. and feeling judgment trying creativity and feeling judged by the people that believe the shit i'm just like where's that coming from do you yeah. actually have a problem or are you just like i don't know i'm for do some everyone. people do some people wish like oh no i, I wish i could leave but i can't because i've got too much in the oh yeah you know what i'm saying yeah i know what you're saying that's kind of a bold thing to say i don't know if no, I mean that. Um, well, it's some people like are like, "What about the unlived life? What if that yeah. way was the right way?" But then, well, it's like a, I mean, a divorce. To do that thing, divorced. Yeah, well, Ooh, like people wishing they could you're, get you're divorced. Like, oh, I want to get divorced, but I'm so far into this. 
Yeah, dude. Similar like job, like oh, I hate my job, but I'm so far into it. Which I'm, same thing. I mean, it's it, there's a lot of it's religion. Religion's just another thing in life. It's job, like another anchor marriage, you're tied to. Religion. That you can't it's let just go. like different things, like house. Like oh, I, I want to move, but I've already done so much in this house. It's not a great example, but yeah, like yeah, just different things. This relationship, this. But there's also the argument that like if you don't ever attach to anything, like your life just doesn't have any structure, meaning, or direction. I guess so. so. Like maybe you but need some of that. I think it's more individually based on if you're happy or not. Like some people love living vicariously and just moving all the time and like yeah. experiencing life. Like but that can job. be miserable too if you don't it have like your miserable. feet under you financially. Like there's, oh, yeah, there's yeah, other yeah. people that like, okay, let's say you're like a college student who's like flower child, want to like go off and do stuff. Like, you know, like hippie. Flower child? Hippie. Oh, um, yeah, hippie. Okay. I don't know. I just said it, but. Yeah, like the people that like, I'm going to go back back in Spain and I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. But in the meantime, they're like not developing any skills. They're not like making themselves marketable for a job. They're not saving money. True. They're not like. If you're hot, you can get away with it. Can you? Yeah, hot people are fine. Have you ever seen a hot homeless person? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. If you're hot, you just get shit for free. Um, as a girl, yes. As a girl. As a guy, eh. Not as much. Unless you're gay, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so it, I, I'm trying to think because like, yeah, like maybe, you know, like you've lived your life in a way like you've gotten established, but you also like are you kind of I'm still trying to figure. Yeah. Myself, but you got like got a good out. job, got a career. But that's but that's also got like, a house. Yeah. But I, it's, I check all the boxes, but but I'm beyond not, but you're using that. OK, now you have like freedom. I guess and autonomy to do stuff, and with the other stuff, you're choosing kind of like okay, it's I don't just want so kids. boring. I don't, I don't want religion. Yeah, anymore. it's just I feel like I've become some boring. Like Bo Burnham has a song where he he says, "You've become everything you've hated," and like I love comedy, and comedy to me is my philosophy for some people, or, or yeah. my music to some people think music's therapeutic, which is great. Yeah, and some people like philosophy, which is also great. Yeah, I mean different things. Comedy to me is is kind of therapeutic yeah and he said he said that and it was like this oh yeah i do have a peter pan complex and i've always had it and i have a stable boring job and i have a i own a home and i'm doing fine right like this is so, so if, if you said that with any psychologist they'd be like you're doing is, great man i'm doing great this is but i don't worry think about the peter pan thing or it's just so boring and so uninteresting like i live in the suburbs yeah fucking what like i don't want that like that's never something i wanted it was just it was the like you get married you buy a house in a, yeah. in a subdivision like yeah. it's the it's what society said you're supposed to do and i did it yeah and yeah i don't care and dude buying yeah. owning a home is like makes so many people happy it makes millions of people happy all the time or Does whatever like having <laughs> having a family having kids makes people happy that's great so i think i'm still like I want to be more interesting because <laughs> yeah. I'm such a plain white dude in yeah. South Carolina yeah. and yeah. I do a lot. I mean, I do comedy. Yeah. I, I try to make people laugh. I think yeah. that's what yeah. I can do. Dude, that's cool, man. That's, that's similar just, to, I feel like how I felt about my life and stuff before mm -hmm. comedy. It was kind of like, I, I was kind of like, what the fuck? I did. I did. I checked every box like mm -hmm. that people told me I was supposed to check. I, I even went above and beyond. Like I, I, you know, I, yeah, it's like, a normal corporate job. I like move for every promoter. Like I make a good money. I'm like, yeah. I own property. I'm like, I was like, this sucks, bro. This it's, sucks. Yeah, it's, this is boring. Yeah, it's so boring. It's so um, underwhelming. To yeah, me. yeah. I, I it's just, I think a lot of, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know because I don't want to look at this as, like just through my lens totally. But like, I wonder how many people out there are like just miserable with that conventional life. Like, have you ever seen uh, Office Space? Uh, uh, yes. A while ago, but not yeah. You know how Peter Gibbons like a is like, bit. he's like, this is fucked up. This is so miserable living in this cubicle. Yeah, like I hate my life. But all the other guys were still like, you know, going. They were still on the hamster wheel and content to do it. He was the only one that like hated like, what's it. What's happening? So much. Yeah. So like, our, I don't know. I mean, the other people in the building were still probably miserable for real. But I wonder how many people in life are actually miserable, like with their situation. You know, yeah, oh, and, it's, and wish they could drop everything and do what they really wanted, but aren't yeah. aren't brave enough to do it. Like I don't know. It also is a place of privilege in that, like I'm stable and 
someone said like uh someone said how's how's work how's your job that's just like the standard question you ask yeah and and i said well i'm living somebody's dream yeah basically like i'm not totally happy with like i'm living someone's dream there are people who would kill for my job or or, my job's not that special but like just like oh i wish i was where no it's a good job guys yeah. at like yeah. i wish i was you're not like working minimum like, wage or uh, yeah struggling I mean, it's, so yeah. yeah i'm fine yeah but it's i'm just it's so mundane and uh yeah just uninteresting but it is i have that like stability to think about how boring it is whereas someone's like Oh, I'm I'm struggling to put food on my table, and I want I would take boring and have money and food, <laughs> right. <laughs> and right? Whereas I'm like, oh, I don't want to be boring, sure. but I have money and food, sure, not a lot of money. But you know, if they got to boring, if they if they were able to get up to that, then they'd probably have the same Pro- experience yeah, eventually. So. eventually. Like once they got comfortable with that, unless place. you just really really want, a lot of people are just fine in that. Like, I own a house, I cut my grass every week. Fuck that. Are they though? Sure, a lot of people are. I mean, that's the American dream. I guess to work towards that. Yeah, I uh, I saw this. Uh, this is kind of a conspiratorial thing. I saw this uh, video that was shared, um, and um, I think the point was we're going to go through a second industrial revolution right now, and the product is not like the first industrial revolution was the 20th century where we learned how to make a bunch of stuff. We learned how to make technology weapons. We got pretty like wealthy yeah, and affluent cons- consumerism. Yeah. Consumerism. Yeah. Basically. So we got all this stuff and then we got all this leisure time, but like the next industrial revolution, the product is going to be people and like, we're going to create a, we're cre- and we're already starting to create like a bunch of people that don't have shit to do. Like we we have like f- enough food to supply food to everybody. Yeah. But like all of our baseline needs are met, and I feel like that already. To where like people are just gonna have to like busy themselves with meaningless shit till they die. Because like there's nothing else to yeah, be done. Possibly. It's just a nihilistic thing. Like, and this guy's prediction was the two things that are gonna sustain like maybe virtual reality, video games, and uh, opiates. <laughs> That's possible. I mean, that's because, a long. We're a long way off because think, we used but. to have to like you know work hard on the la- like you know tilling the land and feeding ourselves tilling and like you know that took up a lot of time. But now <laughs> we just got a bunch of time to like do whatever. So especially in, like the first world, I mean, that's still yeah. We still I mean, do have to till of- land to feed all the people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's possible. There are there are people now that like are it's just a crisis living. of nihilism and meaning versus like. You know, struggle to survive. Yeah. Yeah. What uh-huh. do we do with all these bodies? Well, it's like the same problem. I feel like you were describing, where like you 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 check all the boxes, you have a good job, but you're still like, dude, I still got to do something else. This is too boring. Yeah, I got to do comedy. Otherwise, like, what Com- a- that's my number one. Like, yeah, outlet, creative outlet. Yeah, of something for sure. <laughs> and not to get too crazy about comedy and stuff, but like, dude, it is so good. Like. If anybody's watching that hasn't tried it, you should definitely. I don't know. I think it's so good because like you never know like how how like it could go badly. Um, like you're you're risking stuff and um, it gets that excitement that you don't get from other places of. Yeah, like making people laugh. Hmm. Uh, I like the creative outlet of it for me because I'm not. I'm not a musician. I'm not a singer. I'm not an actor. Like I'm just, yeah. Um, I, I like being funny, and I'm funnier in person. Uh, obviously, look at you laughing right now. <laughs> uh, um, no, I, that's not. That sounds like a dickish thing to say. No, I don't. I'm care. funnier off the cuff, and like I'm the funny friend in my group. Mm-hmm. Is, and I'm also like the punchline, which is great. Like people can direct any joke at me, and it's I love it. Yeah. But it, which is different than stand up. Like you have to craft a joke that makes sense. Yeah. It's not like you had to be there in the moment. I'm going to tell you about the moment. Like, no, it's got to be right now. It's got to be right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I love it. I mean, I'm, I've been obsessed with comedy for so long yeah. since I was young. Yeah. Uh, right. I'm starting to get like kind of douchey comedy snobbish when I think like, okay, you said you're not a musician or an actor or anything. Dude, yeah, I kind of don't like those other, other things anymore. Other, <laughs> I don't listen to a lot of music. Well, no, I love music 
to consume it, but also like, I don't know. Like, I don't think I would enjoy trying to make music. Ah, uh, you know what I mean? Or acting. I tried to take that acting class. Oh yeah, how'd that go? You took an <laughs> acting class. It was great. It was great, and I love the people in the class and stuff. But I like kind of asked the teacher at the end, like, how do you get good at acting? Like, how do you practice it? And she's like, well, you got to get people together and like practice running schemes and stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to get good at acting. Like, just because stand up, you practice, you practice it live. All the freaking time. Yeah, there's not like an to open practice mic. acting. You, there's no open mic. There's for no acting. open mic for acting. Yeah. No, there's oh, improv. That's a good point. But like, I'm like, how do I? And then like, even auditioning, like you send in videos of you reading somebody else's words, and like, it just felt forced to me. And I was like, not not just like, because good acting, like, there are like amazing actors. Like, I'm just I have a lot of respect for those people because I'm like, how do you, how do you do it? I'd rather see bad stand up than bad acting. I think. Yeah. 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 And I think I'd rather see funny acting than serious acting. I would acting. so much rather. Yeah, I was watching. I was 10 minutes into uh, some great show. Oh, my gosh. It's the, uh, it's the one where he makes meth. Walter White. Yeah, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. It's great. I was 10 minutes into it, and I was like, oh, my God, I need to laugh. <laughs> like, oh. I was like, I need to watch a comedy. Like, I, I get that a it's a great. Because I love Breaking I'm Bad. I'm sure it's amazing. Like, the first 10 minutes were Breaking incredible. Breaking Bad is funny. It is funny. Super funny. I guess. It uh, gets funny. Okay. Wait, how much have you seen? Did you only see like 10 minutes? It was minutes 10 minutes. Of the it was, first and it was good. It was like, yeah, this is good, but. It's slow at the comedy. beginning. You got to give it at least four episodes. And I okay. hate when people say that. Yeah. But Breaking Bad, you really do. And it, it does get funny. I was actually going to like reference this and Better Call Saul's about to come out season six. Jesus. Which is. It's so much to watch now. I know. There's so many seasons I know. in the movie and Better Call Saul. Yeah, dude. But oh. seriously. Okay. I don't watch that many shows anymore, but. Really? Better, like, Saul Goodman is the lawyer, and he's, like, the comedic relief of the, the yeah. show and stuff. So, like, he is so funny. Um, And, uh, yeah, I guess since you haven't seen it, I won't talk about it too much. But, uh, but yeah, Breaking Bad has its funny moments. All right. Like, yeah, Jesse just, Pinkman, you know, did you see his character yet? Yeah. Like, I know, yeah, I know the characters, like, Jesse and Walter and saw Wait, so how much have you seen well i just it's such a cultural like thing oh, okay. that people talk, i know the characters from memes and people talking about it and like yeah i mean i mean it i get that it's really good people love it i mean like i understand that it's really good Come on. i need i should watch I it like evangelize you to uh, <laughs> breaking bad i should watch it i just prefer comedy shows or or yeah nerdy stuff like superheroes well i stars. think what makes breaking bad it's not a comedy but it doesn't it's not like absent of comedy um yeah it was funny moments but bill burr's in it dude i fucking love bill burr bill burr and lavelle crawford are in it bill burr's also in the mandalorian yeah is he funny in that uh kind of yeah kind of he's got some of the best like he's only in like three episodes or something and he's got some of the best like character to him yeah but he's kind of funny in it what's that star wars movie that came out um that was like about the planet that got blown up Gosh dang it. I'm going to butcher this. What? Oh, you're talking about Rogue One? Rogue One. Okay. Hated it. Oh, okay. That's fine. I hated it because it didn't have comedy. It didn't have heart. <laughs> they reshot most of that movie. They had, really? They're, they had two they directors and they it? fired them and then they got a new director. No, I'm sorry. Oh, like, the movie that you saw was like shot twice, half remade or mostly remade. The first trailer, every shot in the first trailer was never even weren't even in the movies. They had really like, they had so many production issues. They switched directors. They rewrote a shit ton of stuff. They reacted a bunch of things and just like I think it kind of shows like if you if you yeah. screw with it too much. Yeah, if you if you break it down, it's not. It was a lot of people's favorite, and it was almost going to be like I was so excited for that movie, and it was almost great, but it just wasn't. I feel like it didn't have a lot of heart or anything. There was no... There, I didn't um, care about any of the characters. That chick was not that likable to me. I liked Ray a billion times better yeah. than that chick. Red Letter Media does a really good breakdown of like why... I love Red Letter oh, yeah, Media. Oh, yeah, they're great. Uh, dude, they're so funny, dude. They're so funny. Oh, yeah. Mr. My, Mr. Plinkett Star Wars <laughs> Reviews. Yeah. I'm they, so glad you know about that, dude. I haven't talked to people great. about that. Though, Red I was Media? obsessed with that. Um, oh, I can't remember the director. Those guys are funny. They're so good and funny, and they know their stuff. They, they broke down why it wasn't good and why they, Ray was more likable. There was no character development in Rogue One for any characters 
and then they all died. Spoilers. Yeah. But so when they died, nobody gave a shit. Yeah, like no one gave a shit about them, and it was like, okay, well, glad we watched this movie. It didn't care about the characters, and they all died. Yeah. It was like if you're gonna kill everybody off, you want everyone to like really care for them, and you're uh-huh. like, oh, they died. That was significant. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Red Letter Media is <laughs> And they, they tried to add humor to it, too. The robot. They tried. Was like they tried to make him like a C-3PO knockoff, and he was just not funny. No, I love Alan Tudyk. Alan Tudyk a lot. Who's he's, that? Is that the guy that played the robot voice? Yeah, he played the robot voice, oh. and he was there. He's great. Oh, he's in so much stuff. What else is he in? You would, you would know him. I mean, he's famous for like Firefly. He was the pilot in Firefly. Okay. But he was also the voice on iRobot opposite Will Smith. Oh, okay. I know um, that movie. He voices... The chicken in Moana. <laughs> uh, he's done a lot of voice work. He's been in so many things. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of his other more famous stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a there's a good list of like everything he's played. He's done a lot of voices, but he's also great like in person. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. he's he's comedic. He is funny. Yeah. Mm. Red Letter Media. Mr. Oh, Blinken. they're great. They liked Force Awakens. Yeah, for the most part, because it's a coherent movie. I like. There's I liked beginning, it too. middle, end. There's character arcs. They set up stuff. It's yeah. a good movie. It's yeah, fine. they brought back. They like listened to the fans when they made that one. I feel like it's a soft reboot. Practical effects, soft reboot. It followed the formula. The, the formula of New Hope pretty closely, but yeah. So I actually started to hate it later. Unfortunately. That's fine. Yeah. But the entire at the sequel, time, I was obsessed. I saw it three times in theaters. The Disney era of Star Wars movies are just not good. Even the prequels aren't great. But yeah. The, you can break down all those movies because they have in Red Letter, Red Letter Media and a bunch of other podcasts and like uh-huh. me and my friends yeah. who love Star Wars. We love Star yeah. Wars. And it's just, it's a bad trilogy. Yeah. It's such a bad trilogy. The new one you're saying. The new one, yeah. Yeah. The, the they just need to let it die. Trilogy. It's like the cash cow that just won't die. It was, uh, they, they had got so much like backlash for the middle one, the last Jedi Mm -hmm. and they rewrote course correction and every single thing that they established in last Jedi was course corrected in the third movie in Rise of Skywalker. And it was just too much. And, and someone said it was like, it looks like mom and dad are fighting. Like your parents are arguing and like pulling each other yeah. and you're like i don't know what's happening right i don't know why they didn't just have jj abrams do all three they should have done all three. well they should have fucking planned it like they planned the marvel movies uh-huh. so well those mar- those movies are so well received i mean they're not all great but like they had a general plan and they did they had no plan at all going into the first one they said jj do whatever you want so he just made up stuff uh-huh. did a soft reboot and that was it they're like okay now we're gonna get another director to do something random yeah. Like, do whatever you want. So he did. There was no flow. Oh, guys were crazy. Yeah. The I, biggest franchise in the world and they fucked it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, didn't the original three have different directors? Yes. But George Lucas still was behind all three. He was still behind it. And, and sometimes you don't even want George Lucas directing because he'll fuck shit up. I mean, look yeah. At the he's not. He, he, so he directed the first one, uh-huh. like episode four. But they kind of saved it in editing. <laughs> editing like, saved there's, it. There's huge. There's a great documentary for awful. anybody. Oh, I know it's we're nerding great. out about Star Wars right now, but whatever. How the edit saved Star Wars. You're still listening, great. But <laughs> you know, that is on Disney Plus, and it is the story of the first Star Wars movie, and how, and how shocked even the original cast was that it was successful. Yep. Like they thought this is going to be the most embarrassing, do nothing, dead on arrival project ever. Like it'll, it's like a stupid yep. space movie. And then when they added the score, the special effects, oh, the, the editing, score. it came together so beautifully sound, that it was like... Sound design. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The editing is what saves Star Wars. But yeah, everything everything meshed perfectly. And then, the, and then the sequel, Empire Strikes Back, is one of the best sequels ever made because most sequels aren't as good as the original. Yeah. Like you hear that all the time. What do you think it is about um, Empire Strikes Back that makes it a good sequel? The... Well, they had a bigger budget because the first one was successful. Yeah. He got a good director. Sometimes big budget screw. Oh, yeah. So the director they like got Deadpool was Deadpool 2 had a better budget than the Deadpool 1. Yeah. Um, they got a good director. They really, like, fleshed it out with writing. And uh, they pretty much changed what they were going to do because they didn't think the first one was going to be successful. Okay. So they just, like, they had, like, 
like Luke and Leia weren't going to be uh, related. They were going to be like, um, like kind of lovers. Okay. And uh, anyway, I know I know too much. Um, <laughs> no. But it was. I mean, the twist. The uh, the twist that Vader was Luke's father. Uh huh. Like we know it so well now, but at the time in 1980. It is considered the best twist in all of cinema yeah. at the time. Like this huge revelation yeah. to everyone. And they hid it from all the actors. Yeah. Um, only Mark Hamill yeah. knew about it. Yeah. That's funny. What what year did Star Wars come out? The tr- 77. 77. And then Empire was? 80. 80? 80. 83. So this is so funny. My mom was born in 64. And my dad was born in 64. Yeah. So, she, so they would have been in high school? 74. Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah, my mom has a story about how somebody spoiled that Vader or I think she might have spoiled it for a friend of hers. Oh man. That Vader is Luke's father Huge and how deal. like the friend almost didn't forgive her. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Oh my god. Like, like, <laughs> it's so funny to think about that like it's a lot long ago, but it's funny to think that it's a big deal too. Mm-hmm. Like it's the it's the new Hell, it's the new Marvel movies. Like, you want to avoid spoilers because you want that reveal in the theater yeah. of, like, what it is or what yeah. the deal is. I mean, like, they didn't have social media back then. Yeah. And but, I think there were themes about it, too, maybe that corresponded with, like, the current events of the time, like the Cold War and stuff, like mm-hmm. the Empire and... Oh, um, yeah. Or Nazis, too. The, Nazis the, the, the Empire kind of reminds me of Nazis. That's what it's supposed to... Yeah. It's, but yeah, they call them stormtroopers. They even yeah. called the same... Yeah. Same thing, stormtroopers. There's a lot of parallels... Do you think the battles themselves were like uh, like on Hoth? Um, um, I don't know. Like I, I, this is a weird kind of thing. But like Stalingrad, when the Nazis were in the snow trying to take, uh, um, uh, whatever the Soviet Union. Um, oh, maybe. I, I see no what idea. you're saying. Probably not. Probably. I think it was just a. <laughs> That's a reason. But, I mean, all battles uh-huh. can be kind of parallel to something because a mm-hmm. lot of battles are similar. You, there's only so many ways you can fight a battle. Right. Like, there's right. base, take over the base. And they kind of had, like, trench warfare, too. They were, like, dug in, trench sort warfare. of. Trench it, warfare. Um, there's only so many things you can do. Right, exactly. But I love it. I like Star Wars. Thanks for talking about Star Wars instead of cars. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. We don't know where we're going to go with this. No, I know. I don't know. I know. I'm glad that you like Star Wars. Yeah, dude, I love it. In general, I mean, I love the older ones. I have a hard time the keeping up like the typical Comic Con people that watch every single Star Wars thing. So um, I, I will say, The Mandalorian's good. Mm-hmm. You could just never watch the sequel trilogy again. The Mandalorian takes place five years after the third movie. Okay. So like the like uh, Return of the Jedi, The Mandalorian takes place five years after that. Okay, so it's before. It was before all the new stuff. Okay. All the new stuff, yeah. Isn't, uh, what's his name in it? The guy with the red, uh, what's his name? The guy with the red lightsaber that has uh, two. What's Darth Maul? Darth Maul, yeah. No, he's not in The Mandalorian. He's not in The Mandalorian? Oh, he was in uh, the Han Solo movie. Uh, he yeah. showed up at the end of that. That yeah. was supposed to be a trilogy, but that movie was so bad they didn't make the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, he showed up at the end. See, I liked Han Solo's character. He was one of my favorite. He's like oh, probably my favorite the character original in the trilogy? Whole. Yeah. Everybody loves Han Solo. He was so great. He was like more of a man than Luke was. Luke's a little bitch, dude. That's what I thought. Uh, yeah, most people would agree. I agree. <laughs> I mean, he, he like became more badass, but... Yeah, he got better. He had, he had some arc, some character arc to do. But yeah, Han Solo, everybody loves that mm-hmm. suave dick yeah 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 they don't they don't cast who, that character gets, as much anymore who gets the girl yeah you know who kind of reminds me of han solo is tony stark yeah um kind of full of himself yeah and he kind of evolves like at the yeah, beginning he gets better iron man he was like you know playboy didn't give a shit and he still kind of is that underneath and he's always sarcastic and kind of the dick yeah but he also like has hard, redemptive qualities at yeah. the end it's the hard exterior soft interior mm-hmm. that's what everybody likes yeah everybody's interested interested in it's so funny that he's like the whole center of the marvel universe i think he's more important than basically i mean do you think that's Most true people, like, oh yeah he's he's the main character of the of uh-huh. the the uh what is it, the infinity saga right um and i don't know if that would have happened like nowadays i don't know if you start a new franchise with like that type of character i don't know how you do that yeah because well, some of those characteristics done. are like toxic 
It is it's a very in, toxic. in today's culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, I don't know if they. I I think it's important to give them the character arc. Yeah. So like you give can have it. You can have those those traits. But I think it's like, look, this person's getting better. Or like, well, learning. I think they're good. I think there's a. It's good to have that kind of edge. Like I think it's. Yeah, it should be tamed, but yeah, it still should be like there. Confidence. It shouldn't be like squashed totally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like confidence is good. Cockiness is not. And there's just such a fine line, or if there's even a line, there's a gray area. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you mean. Like the toxic trait versus the not toxic trait, there's a fine line to walk. Because you can be confident and kind of full of yourself ish. Not, you, can be to you can be confident without being full of yourself. Or you can be full of yourself ironically, like Jesselnik. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, it's an ironic character. It's like, it's like James Bond, okay? You know, James Bond, Oof, dangerous. Yeah. You know, kind of a womanizer, Very badass much. though, and a lot of guys like want to be James Bond. A lot of women are attracted to James Bond, whether or not they'll admit to it. Yeah. So like, it's like, why is that the case? You know, like that's kind of like Han Solo to me or Tony Stark. They're like these badass male strong characters that like have these really masculine traits. It's also, but they're also redemptive too. Yeah. Um, it's also fantasy. It's you're fantasizing about it. It's the the fantasy kind of, but I think they exist in real life and in different. I ways. guess so, but not in that magical the practicality is if you are that way externally you're probably not very good inside in most like realistic i don't think so i actually think what's i don't know i think what's good about them is they like they do their own thing no matter what i guess so but that doesn't really leave room for a lover if you're just going to be selfish the rest of your life that's fine <laughs> but like you, you it's the it's the, like the I think the woman version is like he's this hard. No, I think it does. Man, I think but it I can, does. If I can you're following break through your to purpose him. and stuff. I think you you got room for. I mean, didn't Tony Stark settle down? James Bond never Kinda, did. Kinda, not really. Didn't he marry? Oh yeah, he did. Piper settle down. Potts or whatever. Pepper Potts. Yeah, he did in the last movie. Pepper Pot, Pipe, whatever her name is. Pepper. Yeah, I don't like Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> really? Ugh, her vagina candle. Get out of here. <laughs> You don't have one. I don't. Well, as a no, <laughs> I'll John. get you one. Don't worry. <laughs> she would. Oh, uh, I wonder what the scent is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> I don't know. That would be one good thing about her, actually. <laughs> uh, there you go. I turned you around. Uh, Han Han like settles down at the end. James Bond doesn't really because he always gets hurt. Yeah, I mean, he fell yeah. in love, but then she died. Yeah, dude, Casino Royale is a badass movie. Great movie, really great good. Movie. I rewatched that the other day. So good. Yeah. It's probably the best. It's probably my favorite James Bond movie. Yeah, dude, I think so too. Um, the new one was good. I don't know if you watched it. How new is that one? Is that was that within the last? Was that last year? Year, yeah, last year. Yeah, in November. I need to watch that one. Oh, yeah. I couldn't believe how out. old Casino Royale was. That was like 2006. I was yeah. in high school. Yeah. Oof. I was in, not in high school. I was in sixth grade. <laughs> David's old. Yeah. You did just age yourself just then. I did. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I totally do. Oh, man. Mm. So uh, what do you want to do in comedy? Good question. Yeah, we should talk about comedy. We don't have to. No. Um Oh, so for me, comedy's given me a lot, like growing up or especially like, I don't know, through hard times, I guess. As an adult, comedy's helped me a lot. Yeah. So I want to get funny yeah. <laughs> and then give back. So for me, it's like genuinely helped me like therapeutically. Like I love comedy. I put a lot of my self-worth into comedy Yeah. and it's helped me like famous comedians i mean what, i don't know john mulaney i just saw him two weeks ago yeah He's incredible yeah you're and a big comedy fan I'm, you, I, I drive all the time to like comedy you're shows. legit like you go see comedians like i try to like go doing it yourself twice a month at least like a professional show if not more i'll drive to yeah. atlanta yeah. i went and saw ronnie chang in atlanta i saw taylor yeah. tomlinson in atlanta like in the past like six months yeah and i saw brian regan and john mulaney in charlotte like i I, I will drive i love and I think live comedy is so much better than watching it on just TV by yourself. Like, yeah, just watching a YouTube clip or a Netflix clip, it's just not as good as being like 
in the room with other people, other comedy fans. Yeah. And you're laughing. I mean, that's what, that's what any live theatrical performance is, is sure. being in the moment. But so you want to give back? So I want to give back. Like I want to, not that I'm taking, but like I've been given so much by the comedic world yeah. and people who have put so much into it. Like Bo Burnham is somebody I think is incredible. Like he's, yeah. he's my favorite artist ever. Yeah. Uh, I want to give back. I want to. Meaning making like, people laugh, giving people back, giving back. Giving back yeah. or like filming a special eventually. I would love to pay someone like to professionally record me i was thinking like for my 30th birthday which is next year because i'm not handling turning 30 very well <laughs> i'm very far you, away you like that it. bo burnham song yes yeah, so, oh, it's and now, now my stupid friends. friends oh my stupid, stupid friends are having stupid, stupid children, children. <laughs> and yeah it you, keeps going yeah, uh, you, yeah it's the when when that happens we have bo burnham's worldview i don't know bo i was have kids genuinely emotional when he turned 30 on camera when he yeah. said like like two minutes i'm this will be i was trying to f i was trying to finish this before i turned 30 and i didn't uh -huh. and so now we're gonna sit here and watch me turn 30 and i was like oh my god <laughs> just <laughs> everything in me yeah just it hurts there was such a good yeah that song in particular oh, everything because like special. i love it i don't know how it's such a brilliant special i think it's because so like he's like profound in it, but it's so hard to like make a profound point and not be cringy and have yeah. it still be funny, which is why I love like comedy. It was moving and shit like that special dude. Like you and I talk about it. Like I, I will like listen yeah, to we'll the songs it. in my car still Oh, all the time. I've listened to them. So like that Jeff Bezos song. So funny. I listened to five of the songs on the way here and like, they're so like, yeah, they're great. Like he shits on himself. Like he's wrapped up in his own head about like, Oh, just cause I'm self aware. It doesn't, it doesn't make me less make of a better. douchebag. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it he's doesn't. like, I'm going to, I want to make a difference while being paid and being at the center of attention. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He says that. Like, he's so special. torn. He can't even, like, accept his own success. Yeah. Which is awesome. In, like, a real, like, I don't know. I just it think. It feels yeah. genuine. Yeah. He's, like, really wrapped up in his own kind of stuff. And, and then, yeah, like, the honest shit, like, yeah, there's turning 30. Oh, and white women's Instagram. What I heard that song last night. Woman. Incredibly, that makes me want to shit on so many girls. Right? I see, like, honestly, <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I got shit that you could shit on me for, but like, I just the. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, I want. I wish more girls on Instagram had seen that music video. I don't know that a lot have because yeah, yeah, it did get a little popular on TikTok right when it came out. The a white few, woman's Instagram. A few of his songs did. Yeah, um, the Jeffrey Bezos one definitely yeah, hit. That hit. Yeah, the white one's Instagram. It was a little bit. I think it should have been better. I thought that was top three songs easily. Yeah, on the special. God, I love Bo Burnham. There's a yeah, philosophy. Yeah, all eyes Bo on Burnham. me is is is. Uh, is that your favorite? Um, I, that's one I've listened to a lot. I probably maybe Bezos, White Woman's Instagram, or All Eyes on Me is. Uh, it for me, it's um. The, which one? Yeah. Welcome to the internet. Welcome. Welcome to the internet is so have a look around anything and everything all of the time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, dude. That one does make you like apathy's a tragedy and boredom is a crime. Anything. And everything. Yeah. yeah. It's the, the concept of like the internet is just, it's literally everything. Whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. Like that's probably a step to like what you were saying where we're the future of the like, nihilistic future. Of yeah. Just like, Oh, I can have anything at any point in time essentially yes yeah. okay like where do we go from here <laughs> yeah like then you can just live you can start f figure out how to just live without doing anything yeah dude i honestly think like the only way out of that is like writing or like comedy is a way out like doing it not consuming it even mm -hmm. uh i'm not saying everybody has to do comedy but like that's what i've always <laughs> come to like because I, I get up my own well it's just but, your, like, your still, creative outlet i mean even music like cr yeah creativity though creativity which are not not everyone's creative when we don't need to be creative. by definition, creativity is like new. So like, you try to piece together new shit on the edge of what you understand. So like, that is different than yeah. all of this internet. But also, not everyone's creative. I mean, true. We need scientists and doctors to be. Yeah, people aren't to creative. have a to have yeah. a boring life to. 
<laughs> That's true. I don't know. People aren't all right the same. It, yeah. But also, yeah. See, I always look at it myopically, like through my own. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was in the special too. And then yeah, I, I yeah. Can't, that was when he had the sock thing. Uh huh. He's so like, that's, "Why do you white that, privileged <laughs> assholes look at the why do you rich problems? fucking? It's why do you rich fucking white people uh, insist on seeing every socio political um, issue through the myopic learn myopic lens of your own self actualization? Yep, Whew. that's exactly it. Yeah, it was so. Good. This isn't about you. Step this out of the it. way, <laughs> dude. Yeah, either get with it. Or get out of the fucking way. Yeah, that's probably my third favorite song. Mm-hmm. Is the that's how the world works yeah we're like recapping the whole special yeah that that's be a great. good one to watch um i'll be down to come over and just do that one day yeah just, dude we could refilm get get high on, on budget. Legal, uh delta eight <laughs> and then watch <laughs> that yeah it's so trippy yeah but I'm anyway never, so you said I'm, like giving back and comedy back to like what you want to do like you would actually want to like record a special or so 30 is like very optimistic but I was thinking like 30 minutes on my 30th birthday and having, yeah, that'd be cool. Doing, I guess, two, I guess in one night, like most comics do two shows and you just edit it, like yeah. the best take to edit together and do one with friends and maybe family, like friends at one show and maybe some strangers and then one show like completely strangers, like a natural comedic audience and just to see how the difference would be. Yeah. Like invite my friends to come film it at whatever time and then have a real audience yeah i just 30 minutes it's not that much it's a lot but it's not that much like i would love to film that edit it and just I mean, put it on youtube for free yeah that's cool it, i'm nobody but a lot of people are no that's cool actually that's a goal it's a goal to like give for back sure, dude. like and you got to start somewhere i guess yeah dude i like that outlook because like i mean you don't seem like you care that much about outcomes really you could care about doing well and stuff, but it doesn't seem like you're like, oh, when am I going to get booked? Like, I, oh, yeah. I have to do this or that. You just seem to like oh, comedy no, and yeah. like want to do it. I like, genuinely love it. It's super chill. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I love it. people I are like, like ah, like I got to make, like, you, you kind of don't care, but you also like just yeah, want like, it to be good because you like it. I want people to like, laugh. There's no, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like some people are so hung up on like trying to. Oh yeah. You, you know, put yourself worth in how much you get booked. Or how much you I don't are making not you about I mean, people yeah, in general yeah. yeah like yeah yeah you you I don't know I mean I and I do put self worth and like did I do well yeah like did yeah. I make people laugh did I do what I was I came here to do you don't have to like yeah um and making people laugh is so important I I also I want to make people happy and you yeah. can't make everyone happy permanently so yeah. if I could make you laugh. I do it all the time, like just in life. Like I'm trying, I'll, I'll try to make somebody laugh because yeah. if I can make you in this moment laugh about this joke and forget about everything else. Yeah. Like I did something. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool in that moment when they're laughing. They're yeah. Not thinking like, about death. You're not, you're not thinking about anything else. You're not thinking about the problems. Taxes or politics. Taxes. Or... <laughs> like you're not thinking about anything. You just laughed at a joke. And especially when it hits hard. Yeah. Like you're just rolling and that's all you're thinking about right then in that moment yeah i like that yeah yeah it's cool it's, <laughs> it's pretty, cool it's pretty cool what are your goals what are you gonna do oh do I people don't ask know. you that every time yeah i don't know the uh i went to atlanta last night for this late night mic and uh i don't know it's a different perspective i was kind of intimidated because uh like there's just more comics. You don't know any of them. You're kind of like, I don't know. I feel like when you go to another city, especially a bigger market, you're always going to be like these people. Like, is my shit going to work here? Yeah. Are they going to think it's stupid? Are they going to think it's corny? My set went fine. And, uh, you know, it went, went all right. I, 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 towards the end, I think I, I, I didn't finish as strong as I wanted, but like, um, I don't know. You see like how good some of these people are. I just want to keep doing like the next thing, like uh, keep pushing myself to get better basically. And if that means like going somewhere else and like, you know, eventually, uh, you know, just trying to be around people that are better at it than me. Um, And like, 
continue like Greenville's great too. Like there's so many great comics that are ahead of us here too. So I don't know. I don't have any set goals. That's fine. There's I also just, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Like you also because I don't it. I don't even like as soon as expectations put on it. I hate when that happens. What do you mean? Like you're booked for a show, so now you're thinking about this show. Like, oh, I got to do good for this show. I'd rather yeah. just think about. I like the open mics better, where you're just like, I don't care how this goes. Like, I just want to do it because it's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a part of it, though. It's like the it business part, part of, of it. it. We're well, getting good at. It. If you want to be successful, I mean, you, which I think you do. Yeah, I do want to be successful. Like, yeah. you, you got to get booked and get. And you go to more mics than anyone in Greenville. Well. Yeah, you you wouldn't always know it. It's, but <laughs> yeah, I guess just going to Atlanta, seeing like there's more better comics there than there are here. Yeah, well, it's bottom line. Bigger, it's a bigger city. Yeah, that's so it's like how that goes. Yeah, there's I don't more, always. I don't want to necessarily. Uh, like I want the scene to get like really good and stuff, but also, like we got to keep going elsewhere. Yeah, you know? yeah. I wish it was bigger and stronger in Greenville, and we it, have. It's not decent. bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. I think it's maybe like more mics, like we talked about, but than Charlotte. Yeah, we have some really funny people here. Yeah, but it's also kind of a bubble too. So like, you could think you're funnier than you are, depending on like how things go. Like, I, I feel like if I had to go to Atlanta, I'd be like, fuck, like I gotta, <laughs> I gotta write way more. I gotta go to way more. There's like always, you know. There's always the next better person. When I was in Asheville, I didn't realize until like five minutes before I went on stage that my opening joke was a Greenville joke. And I was like, oh, wait, I can't do this. So now when I go to Asheville, I have to make either a Nashville joke or just. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something. I, I the up and coming city thing? The up and coming, yeah. Yeah. Greenville is. The joke is. Um, I think Greenville holds the record. For how long you can consider yourself an up and coming city? <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that joke like three years ago. Yeah, that's a Greenville insider, but it still applies. Because I heard it. Because I've been here for twenty five years. I mean, yeah. like that's, they've been saying that for twenty five. Oh, they've years? been saying it for twenty years. Yeah, I mean, any day now. The reason it's funny is because people are like, "Oh yeah, I've heard that a thousand times." Like, sure, that's for but, twenty years. But to Greenville's credit, man, I don't know. I moved. I moved here two years ago, and everybody was kind of hyping it up but i think it's kind of like people are coming here oh i like i like greenville yeah that's not a sh i'm not talking shit about it it's just yeah. like we got a sweet ass hotel the uh <laughs> the bridge gets a lot of jokes and attention what's that the bridge gets a lot of jokes Did and you attention. see a guy died yeah falling off that thing he was um intoxicated and just like was leaning over and just fell oh my god Someone was sitting on the rock That's underneath awful. the bridge and watched it happen. Yeah, like, we're, we're talking about a suspension bridge in Greenville that goes over the river, but it's like Greenville's famous bridge. It's over like the falls. Are they called the Falls Park Bridge? It's yeah, uh, I think so. So you're probably like looking down like eighty feet, maybe to a hundred feet, and there's there's the water is extremely shallow. There's just rocks and uh it's, a, it's it's a long and it's kind of a curved it's a really cool bridge it's like got suspension mm -hmm. cables over it it kind of looks like yeah, it's a walking bridge though that guy and i've peeked over that edge before like it's nah. a long way down if i wanted to i could just end this shit right now but you did this instead i did this instead yeah <laughs> that guy put the fall in falls park <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like puns. Yeah. Yeah, you should do that one. I should do that one? Yeah. Ooh, That's okay. funny because it's so bad. savage. Like, savage, savage ones can be funny. Can Oof. be punny. Yeah, I made know? a shooting joke the other day when the shooting happened that day. You made a shooting joke the same day as <laughs> the, the same school day. shooting? It hit. It hit. The crowd died laughing. What was the What was, what the, was joke? the joke? Is it Comedy um, Zone? Yeah, it was Comedy Zone. This Just was, this past Thursday? No, this was... um. Two weeks ago. Okay, yeah. Two or three weeks ago. Because I, I was at a writer's room thing. Yeah. And uh, we were chatting about it. And Brandon said, um, Brandon hosts the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. comedy zone. Anyway, he was like, I wouldn't do that joke because it was a shooting today. And I said, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, I guess I shouldn't. So I dropped that joke. Uh -huh. And then like 10 minutes before I went on stage, I thought of this joke. And I was like, oh, my God should I do this? And I ran it by Jacob, who was a terrible, 
<laughs> don't don't run a fucked up joke by Jacob because he'll just say yeah. Yeah. But it was um, <laughs> it's it's so bad. But it was uh, uh, apparently today a shooting happened in Greenville, and uh, I had a I had to rewrite my set to all shooting jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it went something like that that was it but it was i had to rewrite it to all sh- and a pause it was like to all shooting jokes and it killed yeah and no that's like, great Oof. yeah it's a great little yeah great so little, it's little dark dipsy do <laughs> little dipsy do misdirect yeah it's dark it's offensive i mean it's <laughs> no but, it's like when you say like i just i just you know all that stuff in the bible the homophobic <laughs> misogynistic part like all the good parts all the good parts. How you said it you said it better all the good, all the good parts in the. Bible. We're the only good, you know. Just oh, the, I that was a. New we're the joke. only good parts. So I, the new joke <laughs> is, um, like I'm not very religious. I, uh, I just don't, you know, support the Bible. I mean, the whole like hobo- homophobia thing is, the only good part. <laughs> 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 Which I think is funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we were talking about something. Goals and comedy. Goals, comedy, something I was going to say. Different cities, Atlanta. Oh, and you do have home court advantage of like what people laugh about. Yeah, because like I make a couple Greenville jokes. You do have home court advantage. And, also, just knowing what the mic is like. Like yeah, you don't. Like who last comes. night, I was really timid. I was the first comic to go, and like it was mostly comics in the room. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I had a hunch that like my stupid corny stuff that I do for like a Southern Greenville crowd would not work. Yeah. Atlanta's so like I was savage out of breed. the gate. Cause I was like, these are comics. They're not going to want to hear. Yeah. Bless your heart jokes. Like <laughs> screw that dude. It's still a thing in Atlanta, but yeah, it is. Yeah, it I mean, is a thing, but like for a general audience, but for that room, I felt like this is an underground late night. mic. I was like, my shit's probably maybe as good as some of these guys. Probably not. Like I, I'm going to have to like, just yeah. Bring more. It. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, you do have that home court event. Like, it would probably be less threatening. Like, the more mics you do in Atlanta, obviously, like, yeah, I mean, and just hopefully you get better. But because the jokes, the jokes they make in New York are different. They yeah, make a lot of New York jokes that the locals get. I don't think are. Funny. I feel like New York like, comics are pretty savage. You know? Yeah, they are. Like Mark Norman, he's a savage. Like. Mm-hmm. I mean, some people knock his corny like, "Oh, delivery!" Like, I love comedy. It. <laughs> like, you love it. I, I, love I like it. it too. Yeah. I some, I've heard. So it, I've heard people. You know, make fun of. I it could for understand corny, not liking like, his. Hey, comedy! Hey, hey, comedy! Because like, it is cheesy. It is a little that, cheesy. Like, classic. But he's also like savage like, too. Classic like, joke telling. Oh yeah. You know, Sam Morrill obviously definitely is. Fuck Joe List. Sam. Badass. Like, I think he got really good at bought. Like, I listened to him and to, and uh, uh, Mark Marin talk and. Uh, like I think he got really good at Boston because Boston, there's like no bullshit. Like better be fucking funny, better be oh, okay. like, better have some teeth to him. But, you know, yeah. we're not gonna deal with that cheesy shit. <laughs> so part of me wants to go to those scenes and like actually be in them and see what happens. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. See how much I don't know, probably crush my soul. Like, like move, I, like move there. Like move I guess, to New York. I guess. Would you go to Boston first or Atlanta no, first? No, New York. Just not go to New York. I would New York or Atlanta. I won't go to Boston, but I just referenced that because. Yeah, that's like Bill Burr and um, a lot Bill of people came out of Boston. But I don't know. Would you ever want to move to a bigger uh, market and do comedy? Maybe. Yeah. If I got good, I think I'd have to get better. I don't think you should move in. Technically, like, don't they say like two years, three years? I guess so. But At I mean, minimum, I've lived here you... for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long have you been doing comedy though? Oh, 2018. Okay. Like beginning of the year winter but you took a break yeah so i did it for a year and i did fine like i did well it locally yeah. mm-hmm. and then um i took a break in like 2019 basically yeah i basically. only did like yeah a couple open mics yeah and then uh 2020 happened yeah pandemic happened but i did come to habibas a few times yeah that was really fun I worked out some new newer jokes, or all. Actually, I I just scrapped everything I used to do in 2018 because it was all so mm-hmm. cheesy. Yeah, God, it was so bad. <laughs> I was not as dark either. It was just like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you remember any corny old jokes? Yeah, some stupid ones. Um, one was uh, 
I think Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory would run a lot more efficiently if they weren't so short staffed. <laughs> hey, I'm like, yeah, this is this is comedy. <laughs> this is what it is, and it was so much of that, dude. <laughs> it's an old cheesy joke that I wrote. Like it's original. I mean, that's funny. Like <laughs> you should bring that back. <laughs> you liked it. It's so dumb. <laughs> Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really dumb. I had other ones about like, because you reference your personal life a lot. Right? I, I, people do like it mm-hmm. comes from your personal life, and a lot of people do think I'm gay, like just so mm-hmm. often. So I wrote. I was trying to write a joke. I think it wasn't great because I was trying to write this joke as uh-huh. opposed to it coming naturally. But it was um, it was um, a lot of people think I'm gay when they first meet me, and a lot of those people think being gay is a choice. So I always tell them. I tried it, but it was a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I like it's that. It's a joke. It landed. I did that at my very first open mic ever, and it landed. Like, um, it was a gay guy who uh, was like hosting. You said or, it's a pain in the ass to choose to be gay or do. No, sorry to like. You tr- I tried try being, being gay, gay. but oh, I said, "Let me tell you, it's a real pain in the ass." Yeah, that was yeah, the, yeah. that was the punchline. Yeah, and the gay comic loved it. He's like, "That's great," and yeah. I was like. That was terrible. <laughs> it's not bad. I that's think that's fine. funny, dude. But yeah. that's, that's how I started writing jokes. Was just It was mostly, I love one-liners so much. Yeah. God, I think one-liners are incredible, especially a good one-liner. Yeah. No, like, they're great, man. Like Mitch Hedberg is one of my favorites. Yeah, ever. dude. I wish I had more one-liners. Uh, I know. Because I'm bad at stories. I mean, I'm bad at, like, speaking. <laughs> yeah. I'm bad with, I can, I can have a flow, but, like, a narrative, like, a long, too long of a story... For me, I feel like I lose people. Yeah. Like, I, like most people like go on stage and tell one flowing like yeah. five minute narrative set, which is great. Yeah. But I just feel like I lose people. I'm like, oh, this For sure. story is going to sure. lose you after a minute. Yeah, you so I'm just like, short. I like one liners to me are so great because it's, I don't know, a perfect joke. They're like done. Like it's, They're like it's finished. Done. This is it. They can't be fucked with anymore. Like my, cl- my clothes are about. That's how Norm looked at comedy. He looked at it like a math problem. Yeah, kind of. Apparently, you solve you solve a that's what you solve a a joke. Yeah, that's like, what David what? Koechner actually said. Norm was a math genius. So what, pumped. Yeah. The step that episode will already have come out by the time. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. But uh, yeah, Norm was like a math genius. He looked at it as like the perfect joke is like the punchline being very close the, to the setup. The same as the setup. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Those are so good. Yeah. I watched those. The, like in the 90s when he was do you try to sleep. write one-liners or does shit just like come to you and you're like i can make that into a one-liner kind of both so yeah. it's usually something that comes to me and i'll um i'll try to like you just chop it down yeah uh, or something funny happens in like like my best friend and i at work just like uh something naturally funny happens mm-hmm. i'm like all right let me take because we'll build kind of build to it just like bullshitting we call it um we call it one downing each other instead of one upping each other. So if someone says something kind of funny, mm-hmm. the other one will try to reword it into like a dumber. Like instead of trying to make it better, we'll just like make it dumber and funnier, like in a funny way. Like it gets interesting, like progressively worse and just like stupid and cheesy. And it's hilarious. And the people around us are like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, yeah. we're not trying to be funny than the other one. We're trying to like one down. We're Who trying to break this? down. Like Has this guy ever been to a mic. He's come to a few times. Yeah. Um, so you're his name's big gay friend. His name's Kevin. Do what? Ambiguously gay friend. What? Am- ambiguously gay. Ambiguously friend. gay friend. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I mean his name's Kevin. I don't, <laughs> it's not ambiguous. <laughs> I'll say his name. No, 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 no. The ambiguously. You, you know the ambiguously gay duo on SNL. It was an old thing. Oh, oh, like yeah. Everybody yeah. thought they were gay, but they weren't. Yeah. And they yes, had like yes. all these. Yeah. Sorry, my, no, that's he cool. is gay. Is your, is your, <laughs> that's why he is gay. Yeah, my best friend's gay. That's why I was like, <laughs> "What?" Like, no, that's cool. It's not I'm ambiguous. Not, no, I'm he not. He likes dudes. No, no there's no. Uh, uh, no, he, there's no confusion about the matter at all. He's <laughs> he loves. Yeah. No, yeah, he's so funny. No, he's that's so cool, funny. man. But we'll so to so one down each other with these. We'll jokes. try to one down each other. It's just like a stupid term we've come up with, but it's it's we make the joke stupider and stupider to where it is funny. Yeah, and um, and then we'll like. Sometimes we'll play with it if it's something good. We're like, mm-hmm. there's something there. And uh, so he's helped me with a few jokes. Not recently, but yeah, he's helped me out a lot with some jokes. Just like cutting out. Like you have two or three sentences. Like how we or a story. Like how do we chop this down to just the yeah the bare minimum? Yeah. Like what? Yeah. I just I only need to say this. It's nice if every line can get a laugh. 
in some yeah. way. Like I try to think that way now. Yeah, ideally. And you need setup to some stuff. I mean, you do. But you can get little laughs out of different stuff, like a look or something. Yeah, a mannerism. Yeah. I like physical comedy a lot too. Yeah. I wish I was more physical. You like, can be. I can be. I've also seen it bomb just terribly. Yeah. Like someone like falls on stage and it's like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like that was a lot <laughs> for nothing. It's such a risk. Like, it's like, dude, a, yeah, a big physical move not getting a laugh is pretty hilarious. It is kind of funny. I think you just went all in on something. It just, <laughs> like you committed to injuring yourself and, like, and didn't get a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the emotional and physical pain to deal with uh no i love physical comedy i still watch old cartoons yeah like bugs bunny or yeah like roadrunner is some of my favorite stuff like the physical yeah. simple humor yeah because it's almost that one it's like jackass yeah yeah oh gosh <laughs> that's a little different but yeah the physical comedy. The physical comedy i mean that's whew, that stuff's rough yeah I mean, more like Charlie Chaplin physical comedy. Oh. Like, I mean, that's <laughs> old. Yeah. yeah. That's old, but like, I don't even mean cheesy. I mean, newer physical comedy too is good, but mm. Jack has, that's real. Yeah, dude. I could never. It's so funny. I would hate that. They're just like shooting each other. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so I like joke jokes, and I think that's why I like uh, certain comedians. Mm -hmm. because you typically it's like people like who they can relate to. Yeah. I think. Yeah. But I like joke jokes. So Mark Norman, he doesn't really say a lot about his personal life necessarily or right. Anthony Jeselnik either. It's just a joke. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want that. I want to be that. I don't know why you don't want to talk about your personal life. I don't necessarily care about being relatable. You should be talking about. <laughs> yeah, I could. <laughs> uh, if you talk about Caillou, that's kind of personal. Yeah, kind of. That's something that, yeah, I mean, it's derived from my personal life. Or your brother with cancer. <laughs> my brother with cancer. I guess it's I'll relatable. i my personal life if I'm shitting on my brother with cancer. <laughs> um, yeah. I, it is, yeah, I guess I do use my personal life, but I guess I try to make more jokes yeah. than like telling a 30-minute story about this is me growing up. I did yeah. this. I do this funny thing. Yeah. Here's where I went to college. Like, yeah. ha ha. That's fine. That's what most comics are is telling a long story. Like kids. God, so many comics talk about their kids. And you hate it that, It drives right? me fucking crazy. You hate that, right? Like it's just <laughs> like, oh yeah, we get it. Your kid did this thing. Ah, oh, just, ah. Oh. <laughs> it's just so like. Well, there's a lot of people in America that have kids. And I know. That and that's shit. why so it's relatable. it's low hanging fruit for those well, people. I think that's more of a audience too. Like an yeah. audience loves that. Whereas I guess as a comic, you're like, oh, yeah, you're just, your kid did something funny and you're telling that funny thing to a to a yeah. audience like everyone has a funny story about their kids which is fine i'm hating on it it's just yeah it's like fuck your kids you bro. didn't even write know. a joke you just <laughs> repeated what your kid did and people <laughs> laugh <sighs> yeah do you think that's cheating no it's not cheating it is relatable and people like it i just i don't like that like yeah. I, i'd rather a well-constructed joke than I a you. funny story of your kid yeah personally i rely on that a lot not kids but personal stories shit yeah. that actually happens to me in the moment like that's what i write about for sure and well, it's just it's not even like i don't know sometimes maybe that is there's there's a crafting of it for it to work on stage but also like i didn't come up with it from nothing yeah like it's an experience well and people laugh because it is relatability is important uh -huh. i mean like the bless your heart joke that you have like people are like oh yeah that's relatable mm -hmm. i mean that's like I understand that. The only reason I wrote it was because people didn't understand where I was coming from with my set. Like, oh, really? Yeah, they like wouldn't laugh northern... because they're like they thought I was like if I explain that I'm a fish out of water and that I'm weird first, then they're more likely they're like, oh, well, I get where he's coming from yeah. now because this he's not just an asshole. He's kind of like fucked in the head and also not from here. So like he doesn't really vibe with exactly how we think of things. Right. So then they're like, okay, I'll give him a little bit of leeway for like when he says really awful stuff. <laughs> but like, I don't know. Yeah. And relatability is important. I mean, I do find, but I, I don't uh, like that. I think maybe like what I'm saying, like I like the savage joke that like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like that's what I enjoy not, writing myself or like, but, but also some of it is real based off real life. Even the savage stuff. I, I think also. making someone laugh at something they don't want to laugh at, is 
so cool. Yeah. That's the savage thing is like, even people who prefer clean comedy yeah. will sometimes still laugh at something that's yeah. f- kind of fucked up. Yeah. And they're like, ooh, wow, I can't believe I just laughed at that. I can't believe yeah. you made me laugh at that. That's not what it's something I laugh yeah. at. It hits harder. It hits harder when you're like, wow, I can't believe I laughed yeah. at something that's awful. Yeah. That's that's how Louis did it. That's when Louis got good. <laughs> he got so sick of his old corny hour yeah. that he did. And finally he went on stage and was like, he just said, I fucking hate my kids or something. <laughs> Which is also relatable. I never understood babies. Or wait. What did he say? Something about killing babies or abandoning babies. Like, I I never thought of, like, now I understand it. (laughs) And he said the audience was like, whoa. Like, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Kids are And he said he'd rather have that reaction than he would tepid laughter at, like, stupid. So, yeah. And kids are such a touchy subject. Especially for pedophiles. Um, <laughs> pedophile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, ki- and kids and like dogs, like if you're shitting on them, like it, people are like, oh, I lo- fucking love my dog. Like if I That's wrote, why I think you should write about that. Yeah. You should, fuck your dog. Yeah, dude. Do, do, yeah. Do you like. Um, yeah, do, I should do that. It's the opposite like, of what's normal. Because yeah, yeah, I'd rather. I wouldn't want like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. I love my dog too. That, like jokes about their dog yeah or a kid like the cheesy jokes about your kids are people are like yeah yeah it doesn't yeah but i get that shitting on a dog shitting on a dog shitting on a dog shitting yeah <sighs> they would it. still love you you could beat a dog and still love you <laughs> stupid idiot <laughs> i hate you it was like Woo. i smacked my dog just kidding here's some food Smack a bitch. Would you? Yeah. Would you abuse a dog? No. Don't talk about that. <laughs> no, I would. I would never abuse an animal. I really would not. I'm not a vegan. I eat food. I eat meat. But no, I I would never abuse an animal. As much as I hate dogs, yeah. I, just, I would never abuse one. That's yeah. that is cruel. I love it's dogs, man. It's fine. I love an encounter with a dog. I think they're they're wholesome, man. I think they're yeah, like some are. They got, they got good vibes, man. <laughs> they come up. They're like. Like if I get a dog a to like me, I feel like we're connecting on some uh, animal level. <laughs> all dogs like I don't know. They're easy to please. Sort not of. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's not hard to please a dog. I don't know. I think they pick up on energy. Like I think they, they can tell if you're sad or stressed or whatever. I guess. I mean, sometimes yes. You don't I know think so? A, no, I, think I know they that's can. a thing. They got like emotional support animals and stuff. I, I, I know think that's they a can. Thing, they yeah. can pick up on. They are smart, know. but they don't understand. I mean, they understand. I think the dog can understand like 300 words. They basically got the vocabulary of like a two year old. Mm-hmm. Like they understand like outside or walk or like their name and stuff. But well, Louis C.K. had a joke about the dog in his new special that I thought was really like how they don't understand anything. And he did like, uh, really dumb. and also said like, I really want to know, like you ever seen your dog make a decision? And it's like, they <laughs> oh, walk yeah. into the room and they're like, I'm going to go over there. <laughs> and just walk over there. It's like, why? Why are you doing these things? It's such a weird, like, yeah. Like dogs. No, I know what you there's mean. There's something just, going on in there. I don't know. Dog Dog humor is not for you me. Just, you just hate everything about dogs. <laughs> You're like, this is not interesting. I get the I don't give a shit about I dogs. I support the, like, emotional supportness of the animals that people need. Yeah. That's fine. I'm yeah. happy for you. I just, ugh. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny. Like between dogs, kids, and religion, you're like, you know, if you need these things to make sense of your meaningless (laughs) life, go ahead, you (laughs) stupid fucks. I don't care. Yeah. It's not for me. People have kids just to give themselves meaning. It's crazy. That's a real (laughs) thing. I'm not even making that up. So many. Not. I'm not saying everyone who has children. I'm saying there are people who are like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to have a kid. I need a meaning in my life. I'm going to make a baby. Kids are pretty meaningful, though. It's a real thing. Yeah. I'm saying... They don't have anything, so they're like, well, <laughs> I'm going to make a kid so my life has meaning. Like, Yeah. Again, not everyone who has children. You see Fight that, Club? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like the next thing. Buy an apartment. Buy a couch. <sighs> buy all these things. Get married. Have a kid. He's like, We're a generation raised by women. I'm not sure another woman is the, right, is the answer to our problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they just rebel against the conventions of society in that movie, but... Yeah, I don't know. I do want to point out this professionalism right here. What? 
No shoes? No shoes or socks. Oh, yeah. I really care. You don't have bad feet. It's just funny. It's like his feet have been in cram- camera for so much of it. Really? At least you'll get part of the internet to subscribe to that. Maybe. Start selling feet pics. No, you can put your feet in. Dude. It's just funny. I, yeah, I, don't, I, I don't. I'm doing this because I want to. <laughs> I'm putting my feet down because I want to. You're so cautious about because you now? told me. <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> I don't know. Do, do people on the internet care about... Uh, is it more guys with the foot fetishes or are there girls with foot fetishes for guys feet? Um, it's both. I, I know a girl who has a foot fetish. It's really? Weird. Yeah. I, I mean, I just know of her or not. I know her, but who she, she likes. No, 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 <laughs> no, she doesn't. This is not a comedy person. It's more of a friend of a friend. I got it. But yeah. like, she's talked about it before, uh-huh. but it's more, she has a fetish about her foot in like a guy's mouth. <laughs> I was like, that's weird. Like, she doesn't care about his feet. She wants, Sounds like she wants to dominate the guy. I was like, that's weird. That's so, like she wants, it's the ultimate submissive. Like, <laughs> if you put my feet in your mouth, I have yeah, control over you. Yeah, take my toe. Like, yeah. Um, um, no, this girl, she, she doesn't do comedy or anything. Mm. But, yeah, I guess it's probably more guys that are like, I'll buy feet pics from you. Yeah. It's weird. It's, we're bored, I mean, dude. It's fine. We're bored. People are bored. They're looking for different sexual novelty. Like, yeah. like we're gonna run out of ideas, bro. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. Whatever. It's fine. People. Need, I don't want to kink shame. People need something. They need me. I don't want to kink shame. Do whatever. Be into whatever you want to no be kink into. Shame. I don't want. I don't want to kink shame. I'm not kink shame. No, I know. I'm. I'm saying I don't want to. Yeah. Um, be into as long as you're not hurting anybody. As long yeah. As it's all consensual. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, preferably adults. Hmm. Yeah. We've been going for about two hours. For real? Yeah. What time is it? Wow. Didn't seem like it went that long? No. No? I mean, this is probably a pretty good app, hopefully. Yeah. I've never lasted this long. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. A little sex (laughs) joke at the end there. Sneak it in. (laughs) Sneak. Yeah. I don't do a lot of sex jokes. Yeah, you don't. I'm not. I'm not. I don't cuss a lot on stage. To what? Don't have a lot of sex. I don't have a lot of sex. Yeah, yeah I can't relate to it. <laughs> I'm an incel. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Sex jokes are fun. They can. I think they're easy. I think sex jokes are... There's everyone You're has... You're already talking about a topic people want to giggle about. Yeah. Uh, it's like, haha, sex. Now, I do have That's jokes. Sex. I do have sex jokes, but they're not sex jokes yeah because like yeah. i have my incest joke yeah and it's like i guess that's a sex joke but it's very much overridden by the fact that it's incest right right right. Which is kind of funny to me how does it go oh uh, oh um, you're telling all your jokes on this so my joke. it's fine i need to burn them anyway they need to <laughs> you gotta write new <laughs> uh no i think i'm gonna save that one <laughs> i right. don't think i'm gonna come see my ben incest talk about podcast. incest Incest, cancer. Incest, cancer. Incest, cancer. <laughs> cancer very... that hooks up with its <laughs> own cancer. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd cover a lot of weird topics. Mm-hmm. I just like being... I don't ever want to offend anybody. I don't enjoy offending people. I just, uh, But I want you to laugh at something you're uncomfortable laughing at. Hell yeah, I think bro. that's enjoyable. Yeah. We need savages so. in comedy. For show. Sure. For show. Sure. All right, dude. Well, we can kind of wrap it up here. Yeah, man. Shout out your stuff. What do you, do you are you doing like social media? Like a lot of Yeah. I, I know you got you got, oh you got TikTok. I don't know. And post you produce some I just did one. Oh yeah, we could talk about that real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. So you produced a video. Tell yeah, this, like, so you put more effort into this TikTok video <laughs> put than so anybody puts into TikTok. I put I think twenty eight hours worth of like time and effort yeah i made a not uh, a good strategy to get you could put it at the beginning of the video if you want to i think you said you were going to do clips of people stand up you don't have to it's fine no i I, i'll yeah that's not a bad idea yeah it's one minute for sure but um i was just gonna say like the amount of effort you put in not exactly the strategy to like make because it's like so time consuming (laughs) Uh, and the internet doesn't appreciate yeah they people can can, but it blew up a little bit i got like seventeen thousand views and like oh yeah dude like it was like 7,000 likes or something. Yay, which it's is like, a lot for one video. I yeah. posted one video on TikTok and it got that. Yeah. Just saying it's higher quality than most. It, I went for quality over quantity. But yeah. TikTok is not really made to like 
post like super high quality stuff. Like it's mm-hmm. just like people post every day. It's just yeah. here's one thing of me doing something today. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like it you just take Quick one take stuff. and that's what you post. Yeah. Which is fine. Some people put time in there. But what was it? What was the concept behind the video? Tell people real quick. Oh, um, tell people at home. So, <laughs> a much better show than Caillou is uh, Perry is um, Phineas and Ferb. It's a great cartoon. Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb. You're such, such a, a good, nerd. Such a good cartoon. So I'm the oldest of four. I think I say this on stage. And like, when you're the oldest, you have to watch shows that you're too old for. Right. Um, just because it's like, okay, all all of you kids go watch something. Like, damn it. Like, there's a six year difference. Yeah. And and. 11 and 5 is such a big deal. Anyway, I liked Phineas and Ferb. Uh-huh. I genuinely liked it, even though I was a little too old for it. It's a good show. There's good comedic beats to it. It went on for several seasons. Uh, the creators are great, like funny guy. Uh-huh. Um, and there's a lot of like repetitive humor in it. It's just very funny. One of the characters is a platypus, and he's a secret agent. And <laughs> I got this idea years ago to... His name is Agent P. Uh, to dress... Like in the same colors, it's like a, it's like a greenish turquoise. Yeah. I can't I can't remember the color exactly, but to dress in like a suit and be like a James Bond agent P. Yeah. Uh, and there's a brown fedora, and I have a suit, and I eventually found one that was the color. Yeah. And I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna make a video. So I did a whole video, a minute long video, with my brother and uh, f- helping me film it, and uh, Kevin helped me too, write, yeah. write and film and edit a lot of it. Yeah, but for one minute, I just go around doing stupid stuff. Yeah, in a suit well, downtown. I filmed a lot of it downtown. Yeah. I got recognized by like eighteen, twenty people. Yeah. They were like, "Are you supposed to be Perry the Platypus <laughs> from Phineas and Ferb?" And I was like, "Yeah." When you were like, shooting it, you mean? I was when I was shooting it because yeah. I had the brown fedora and the suit yeah. and like yeah. a tie. Yeah, dude, I I people loved who it. I was. But it was also this is also a good example of like the two sides of you that like we were talking about earlier, like the savage side of like yeah. the, the Jeselnik side versus like the niche kind of <laughs> just nerdy obs- side oh, that yeah, also I'm has so yeah like Comic Con. There's a quirkiness, almost. the Comic Con stuff together. I think that's great, yeah. dude. I'm a I think kid. It's cool. I'm a kid at heart, and I'm but I'm also a savage. I'm a kid at right. heart and a savage in the head. I don't no, know. No, I like it because I don't know anybody else like that. You know, so it's I, like, I do have very it's cool two sides of a yeah. So check that out for sure. Yeah. Um, so subscribe to your TikTok just to watch that. <laughs> just to watch the one video. Just to watch the one I'm video. I'm going to start. Hopefully and by I'll the time this comes out, I'll start posting clips of what is your TikTok stand up. Um, I think it's Ben Jennings comedy. Okay. Don't uh, worry about it. I'll link it below. And then what other stuff? Follow me on Instagram. For it's uh, Benny and the Jennings, like Benny and the Jets. I got that from a podcast that read a tweet of mine, and they fucked up my name. <laughs> they were like. Because they thought it was Benny and the Jennings. And they were like, wait, no, it just says Ben Jennings. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, uh, so, so you I just made it Benny so and I the Jennings. So I was like, all right. I'm, well, it, that, was a, that was a tweet. Yeah. And um, so on Instagram, because I made Instagram way too late when I was like 26 years old. Yeah. So I just used Benny and the Jennings. That is late. Oh, yeah. I'm older I'm, than you. And I made my Instagram when I was oh, like 23. Yeah. I wish I made it a long time ago. Yeah. I wish I made stuff in high school i just didn't care early instagram so funny how different it is than now yeah but follow me on instagram yeah i'll follow you back i don't know uh yeah dude you got a youtube channel yet um i posted the parry yeah uh but so, I, okay. I posted the parry thing on there that's good yeah. mm-hmm. i guess i should post clips of stand-up i was gonna do more with tiktok yeah like clipping stuff and posting it yeah i don't know i think i'd like to do that <laughs> it's just it's a yeah. full it's a freaking job putting content out though. It's crazy. It's important. It's a lot of work, but I I like it. But I'll post shows on my story on Instagram. That's yeah, usually where I post comedy That's stuff. That's usually the best place to follow it's, comics. I think is Instagram. Yeah, you follow get, and you can yeah. just watch my story and I'll post about yeah shows. Come see Ben performing every week in Greenville. All the mics. That's true. Yeah, I don't have a show to plug. <laughs> It's fine. Yeah, you'll you'll be booked very soon. Oh yeah, I don't. Sure. It's fine. I don't care. I I want. I care more if about I getting shows, better. I would book you. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. David wants to sleep with me. The gay shit. <laughs> it's so gay. much fun for me. Yeah. To do that, I don't. I hardly ever make a gay joke except you just take it in such a weird way. So I do it more. No. It's... I've been called gay my whole life. <laughs> I really want to say the f word on stage. Just because of my like faggot, yeah. Oh, whoops! 
That's what fine, he was talking about. That's it. what I'll say. I I want to say it on stage so badly because I've been called it so much. Like it's a personal experience. Like you people think I'm it. gay. You can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, but saying like the punchline. Saying it is so hack. It's a little hacky, and also I think you can only get away with it if you're a certain comedian. Like yeah, one maybe. if you're gay, but also it's it's offensive. So I want to make sure it's a good joke, and I set up. I set it up well. Yep. I don't know. Sorry, we can we can stop. I just yep. that's something I thought of. Yeah, we're gonna end on. <laughs> I don't I want to end on that. <laughs> All right, go. Yeah, come, come see me in Greenville. Come see David in Greenville. He's also great. I don't know. I'm a nerd and dark. Fucking awesome. No, I'm a sad nerd. No, dude. I I actually think Greenville's like plugging along. Like, dude, honestly, I like Greenville. The show the other night. I like Greenville. Was good. Yeah. We had oh, like yeah. good. And we have fun. Up. I feel like the crowd was with it for like Lots. the majority of the show. That was a better Thursday, I thought, than it was. I got recognized a few times you in the did? past like month. Um people they don't they didn't know my name, but they were like Comedy Zone. Like they just pointed at me and yeah, said like, Comedy yeah, Zone. Yeah. And I was like, Hi, and they're like, We like your stuff. Like Awesome. Dude. I mentioned being homeschooled. Ben's some people are like be famous. Some people are like, Oh, you're the homeschool comedian. I was like, Yeah, That's I am great. the homeschool comedian. It's so cool. They remember something specific mm-hmm. about it. And on Thursday, Four people that went to school with my brother that were in his grade when he got cancer yeah. were there. Yeah. And afterwards, they, they were, were like, cool, man. Yeah, they were cool. They were fun. They were like, we liked your joke about your brother having cancer. We know him. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty funny. Yeah, anyway. so the Comedy Zone is the best spot to come out and see Ben probably for, uh, on Thursday. Try to be there just about every week. It's a fun ass. That's a fun show. It's a good show. Mm. But All right. thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, dude. I wish I had more stuff to... Point. No, you're no, that's fine, dude. TikTok, I'll start posting stuff. I promise. Yep. yep. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you next time. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.